slightly preoccupied right now fixing the volume, but okay. we will, uh, once that is fixed, we're, uh, we're good to go. But yeah, we, we can do this pick in the meantime. So you just uh, tell me what you like and then I'll agree or disagree. Well, so Gedjazan Auctioneer is of course a staple in Rogue Constructed, but in Arena I don't think it's that good. Um, mm -hmm. The Gnomish Experiment uh, can be okay, um, but I kind of don't like it, so I would probably pick the Young Priestess. Yep, I think it's a fairly straightforward Young Priestess. It's like, you know, process of elimination. We do kind of don't want this style right now, but at the same time, it's okay because we'll just uh but we'll adapt to the draft right i'm not gonna force the control rogue if we get a really good aggressive deck we'll still pick that right okay. you guys still can't hear luvi interesting really? okay let me uh no that's not on your end i can i can keep boosting you here that's so weird uh okay maybe i'm just the... talking too quietly no 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 because i can hear you fine um okay. so i just boosted you i just need to find out why you're not uh, what's this? This shouldn't have anything to do with it, though. I just switched. Okay, guys. So just, even though this shouldn't have any effect, let me know uh, if you guys can't, uh, if you still can't hear Luvi, and then I'll just, uh, I'll just boost him up some more on my end. So that's fine. All right. Why don't we make this incredibly difficult pick? Uh, yeah. Next, next uh, pick here, Luvi. Bar. Yes. <laughs> Every time out of armor, that card is so incredible. Yeah, and right here, I think it's a Spiteful Smith. Yep, Spiteful Smith is a premium card for Rogue. It's just yeah. so good, so incredibly good. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Now, I really like Frost Elemental, to be honest, but I think Eviscerate is just too good of a card. Yep, yeah, I, I think Eviscerate is just so insanely uh, versatile that makes it such an, a really really good card yeah uh still too low okay i'm just gonna slap 50 percent on it right and then we'll build down if necessary let me fix this first All right, guys. Just let me know how this how this goes now. Okay. Uh, I think as a test, I'm just going to talk about the now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Just let me know. Uh, okay. Um, wow. This one's pretty difficult. I think. Mm -hmm. um, would probably pick the Squid Face because it's the new card and I haven't played with it as much. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I think Betrayal can be really, really good. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the thing uh, where I right now would pick the Betrayal as an experimental pick. Um, but it's still, I mean, I, I know ex I know exactly why I want it and where I want it. So it's not like I'm like, hey, I've never played with this. Let's, you know, pick it up. Yeah. Um, I think that the Squid Face in a vacuum is better. But what are we going to try to do? Uh, we are going to try to draft a little bit heavier and then uh, having a Betrayal to then stop aggression onto us is going to probably be better than just dropping a 4-4 yeah. uh, like if, if possible we're going to structure the deck a little bit more in a reactive way now if that doesn't pay off the trail is still fine because minions are pretty big in this expansion there's a lot of a lot more fatties around so the trail should still come in handy at some point okay better but still too quiet you guys are insane all right let me uh <laughs> <laughs> the moment the moment Hearthstone kicks in, you guys are gonna get your ears ripped off. You know this, right? Because Hearthstone's link <laughs> Hearthstone's linked to his voice. So are just gonna like, Hello! Gamekeeper's <laughs> just gonna come in. Alright, you're at 175% volume right now. If it's wow. not loud enough now, guys, then uh, I don't know what it is. Okay, why don't you uh, talk us through okay. this next pick here? I, I think it's an, pr a pretty easy backstab. Yep, pretty easy backstab. Huge fan of Mukla's though in the more aggressive on the board, but not so much in the reactive style. So yeah. pick the backstab. And, and, and easy. Shaman and then Paladin, it's insane. Yep, but in Rogue, it's actually really good in the aggressive style. Because right. you know, you, you get on the board guaranteed because you're a rogue and then you can Mukla. It's kind of a you know, because if you're picking in Paladin, if you're picking in Shaman, there's still the risk that you know you're not on the board. 
Yeah. Whereas if you pick it in a rogue, I mean, who's gonna push a rogue off the board? Maybe another rogue with like a better a better deck, but that's about it, right? Yeah, that's true. Huh. Um. Hmm. This one's kind of difficult. I don't know. How big are you on uh, two drops in this expansion? Pretty big still. I think it's still a. Uh, I mean, even for a more slower reactive rogue, uh, two drops are just kind of the. Uh, how, how do you say this? Just the oil that makes the machine work. I feel it makes your curve work. You can combo things like a betrayal, uh, like an eviscerate, a little easier. You can fill up your curve. Um, you know, turn four, you're gonna want a dagger. Slap down a two drop. Uh, I feel like the rogue decks that don't do well for me are the decks with not enough two drops. Uh, contrary to a popular opinion that Rogue doesn't need two drops. Because okay. a lot of people say this, right? Rogue doesn't yeah. need two drops, dagger on two that's is cool. Why, yeah, that's why I asked. Yeah, but then you kind of just die, I feel, right? You're daggering on two, sure. I mean, fine, unless yeah. you have like two Skulkers and a Phantom Knights in your deck, they're just going to out, you know, they're going to out tempo you and then you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, um, cool. Well, Summoning Zone is good for some great memes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some dank May <memes>, Mays. <laughs> But I think then I would pick the Sun Fury. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, we only have one real two anyways right now. So yeah. I like the uh, Sun Fury myself. Okay. Um, now I'm not quite sure how good Journey Below is. Otherwise, I would probably pick the Taunt if it's not that great. So the thing with the Journey is that it's obviously you're losing out on tempo. Um, yeah. So whenever I'm picking this card, I'm always looking at the card next to it and see whether it is worth that, right? Okay. I think here we can pick the journey below because the alternative is an arcane nullifier, which is reasonable, right? Um, if the alternative was, um, say, you know, an ogre ninja or you know something really good on curve, I'd pick the good curve card. Okay. But in this particular pack, I'm not too excited by the uh, curve card. So now pick the journey, uh, seeing as we do already have that betrayal, we're going to be able to hold them off and then hopefully, you know, get a Cairn, get a Sneeds, get something really big value in the late game. Okay. Oh, we have so many spells. We should have picked the Auctioneer. <laughs> well, it's still a terrible Auctioneer, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, easy Bog Creeper. Yeah, Mr. Bog, perfect for our reactive deck. Yeah. Um, wow, Azure Drake is really good. Yeah, I'm not as big on Azure Drake as most people, but in this style, it's still good because, you know, I mean, card advantage and mages and stuff. Yeah. We do have a backstab, but makes it a lot better. So that's nice. <laughs> um, huh. So uh, I think Venture Co is only good if you have some spells to back it up. And we do have some spells as of now. We do indeed. Um, but I still probably would pick the two drop. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Charg is a good two drop. Penchico, I feel in Mage it's fine because you can ping and kill a Bach with it. But in Rogue, you know, we still have to take the six. It's not that great. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how good Fan of Knives is in this expansion because I think I drafted it a couple of times and it was always, it, it was just stuck in my hand for like the entire game. And after, like, if I get into the top decking war, I just, like, throw Cycle it out on it, the empty yeah. board. Yeah. So how have you been constructing your rogues? Um, usually very aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, like, so, yeah, a lot of twos, a lot of threes. It makes ones. sense. Do you see why that card is not good in an aggressive deck? Yeah, I guess because I'm like uh, playing aggro control all the time so I'm like to you're not gonna let them put yeah. stuff on the board anyways right yeah so if you're playing aggro control cold blood is definitely the pick but okay. we're trying to uh build this more reactive style so i pick the fan here actually okay uh, we do have the drake as well which could you know gets get really ridiculous we can do some constructed plays we just fan for two it's nice looking pretty good so far oh deadly poison easy yep poison's good um, ooh. Wow. Um, we have one mech. I don't think Cockmaster is ever the pick. Um, but I'm not quite sure about Spawn of Nazoth. Because, I mean, okay, we have a couple of two drops. One one drop. Maybe we'll be on the board. And then the spawn can be okay. 
Otherwise, I think it's the cold blood. Okay, so this is a really uh, good analysis that we can make here because essentially what you're asking your deck to do is two times the same thing, just one time a little bit more extreme than another one. So this pick essentially asks your deck, can we get initiative? Can we get on the board? Can we get something to stick? Yeah. I don't think we're picking Cogmaster. I think you made a good uh, point there. So then I would just pick the Cold Blood because Cold Blood just needs one guy to stick and then you can work with it. Spawn of Nazoth requires, you know, two, you know, or, or the spawn itself to stick and then you play some shit and then you pop it in. So if we were playing a more aggressive variant, I'd still pick the Cold Blood. So I think in both cases, wow. okay. either you're playing on the board to um, win it really fast and then Cold Blood's still really good, or, you know, you're just trying to get something to stick to get a little bit uh, done. So I think in both cases, it's the Cold Blood. Yeah. Yeah, it's just um, because I, whenever I drafted Cold Blood in the past, I never got very much value out of it. Um, so I, I, I didn't know if, if maybe the new card um, would be better, but okay. I'm... Cool. Yeah, Cold Blood's a card that I like a lot in the aggressive variant, and I think it's still going to serve its purpose in this kind of deck. Yeah, uh, I think it's another barber. Yep, easy barber, super good. Um, hmm. We don't have a real three drop right now, but Ironforge Rifleman, I don't think is very good. Um, the Snowbolt, we don't have a four drop either. Snowbolt could be really good in our deck because we have some <clears throat> spell synergy. But I think Blood Cell Raider is just a premium two drop. Yeah, Blood Cell Raider is just such a uh, versatile card in Rogue. We already have the Poison, we already have two Barbers, so I think it's almost always the... Uh, the, the blood seal here. Okay, um, when do you start looking for curve, like in the draft? Pretty much at the start. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna let you in on how I look at this curve, by the way. I think right now, I, I, I don't think Rogue needs four drops. That's the first thing. Uh, it, Rogue can get away with like having two four drops, and that's perfectly fine. Because okay. uh, we already have two auto barbers, and turn four dagger barber is a perfectly fine play. Two drop eviscerate is a perfectly fine play. Two drop dagger that's not necessarily barber is also a fine play. So this is kind of the uh, the thing why I brought it up that I want to have enough two drops because then I can kind of just make my own curve. I can I can just make it work. I feel like the better player you are, the more flexibility you want. You know, if okay. you have like one, two, three, four, that's not really flexible. And I'm not gonna say that that's not good, um, yeah. but in rogue. You want even more options, right? You just want to, because that hero power is so flexible. So it's kind of yeah. the reasoning. Well, I like to limit my options so I can misplay less. Mm, okay, well, I mean, that's a good strategy. Uh, but I mean, the better you get at the game, you're going to yeah. want to you want to you're going to want to open that up. I mean, that's the point of this session, right? <clears throat> yeah. So I'm quickly going to ask the chat here. So how is the volume now, guys? Is it doable or not? Because I can I can switch it up even more, right? I can just push the volume even more on my end. Uh, we'll see. All right, well, what would you like here, Louis? Um Probably Shadow Strike, because it's kind of unfair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, pick the Shadow Strike, very good for our I reactive mean, style. Two, I really like drafting these two as well, but... Yeah, I, I think I think this isn't... I don't think this is an easy pick at all. Yeah. I think that picking up a three drop here is maybe even a little bit safer. But yeah. I think we're just gonna trust in the draft go for the reactive style and uh, pick up some more value cards. All right, Shadow Strike. Just a little louder would be good. Holy shit, you <laughs> guys. All right, let just me- Just a uh, tiny, tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. What the fuck is I'm gonna this? Have to, I'm gonna have to completely haul this around once once we do something else, but whatever, it's fine. Wow. Okay. This pack, man. So which card is it definitely not? Uh, the Tinker. Okay, that's very good. Why is it not the Tinker? Explain this to me. Um, because I think it's best better in uh, aggressive decks. It's kind of like the, the fireball thing that just goes face most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, and I don't think we need it right now. Yeah, you're definitely right. That's a great assessment. Tinker Shops. This is a very, you know, like we said it from pick one, we're going to try to draft this. 
uh, and we are being successful right now in drafting the reactive style. Yeah. Tinkers in a reactive style, not so good. Um, hmm. Now, I don't know, Eviscerate and Backstab are both insane. Um, I actually never, I never in my whole life had these two in the same pack. Oh, wow. <laughs> maybe, maybe I haven't played enough Rogue then. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. I, I haven't. Um, I'm just going to guess that it is the Eviscerate. But I'm not sure, and I don't. I can't really explain why. I think because Eviscerate is maybe a little bit more flexible than <clears throat> Backstab is. Is but it I'm more flexible? Sure. Um, Backstab zero mana doesn't get more flexible than that, right? Yeah, that's true. We're gonna pick Eviscerate, but it's not because it's more flexible. It's just because it it does more uh, in uh, in in the grand scheme of just counting of value. It deals four damage, backstab deals two damage, right? Yeah. So we also have enough early game stuff to hold him off. We already have a stab, we already have a poison, we have two barbers, right? Yeah. We can we can deal with uh, early game aggression, and then we just want something to deal with the mid game. So this rate for me here. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. The bot clear, I think, is the best one. Corrupted Sia. We are gonna need some win conditions, but yeah, we'll pick the seer. <laughs> yeah, but but ancient mage or, or no 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 no. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm just saying that this yeah. deck right now fits the profile. It just lacks things to end the game with. Yeah, don't <laughs> like we can kill whatever they throw at us. We just don't have anything to kill them with. <laughs> we'll get the legendaries. Wow, what the fuck? Yeah, uh, the skulker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a like nothing they play is gonna stick. This is really funny. Okay, cool. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um I don't know. Do we need even more like weapon buffing and such? Or do we actually need like a minion? Because <laughs> I think other than the Bog Creeper and maybe <laughs> the Smith, we don't really have any yeah, we have nothing to kill him with. I'd still pick a Buccaneer here, though. It's still the Buccaneer yeah, over the yeah. Deadly. Yeah, Buccaneer is just much better than Deadly, right? Because turn three, you do uh, Buccaneer Dagger, and then you've got two damage weapon and a two damage body on the board. Uh, okay. So it's a lot more uh, like they have to deal with a lot more rather I than just throwing up the three power weapon. I just thought because um, most of the enemies I get are a mage, mm -hmm. and they always just ping the Buccaneer off. I feel like. Yeah, okay, but we're not going to play him on turn one, right? We're going to okay. play him on turn three and then dagger, and then if they want to ping on turn three, that's fine. Ah, okay, I see. Yep. <laughs> okay, I think now it is probably the Shadow Pan Rider, because we just need, like... So if this is uh, an early pick, I think I'd go for the Buccaneer. Now it's okay. very, very, very much the Shadow Pan. We just need a beat stick. Yeah. After we remove all their stuff, we just need to put something on the board that sticks and then hits them in the face. No law for the core horn. <laughs> <laughs> Costs more, has less health. Um, wow, another shadow strike. So this is the point where you actually look at your deck and start thinking, <laughs> hmm, is it ever an Ogre Magi with all these spells? I'm yeah, just looking it, at it, right? So we've got a backstab, we've got two eviscerates, we've got a fan, and we've got a shadow strike. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm just entertaining the thought because we got so much removal yeah. that, you know, at some point we might have too much. Uh, hmm. Pretty insane deck. Like, this deck is 12-0, calling it. If we get some beat sticks, Asmo, I think so. It has potential for sure. All right. I think the Shadow Strike is still fine. It's, uh, it's just such such a disgusting, uh, disgusting card. Ah, perfect. Okay, uh, the Tomb Pillager, I yeah. think. Pillager, just uh, hitting people in the face. Although I really like the kind of zombie jaw. But yeah, but this deck absolutely yeah. doesn't need it. This deck just needs substance right now. It needs cards that cost mana. Because yeah. this, um, this is how the early game is going to look, right? They play something, we kill it. 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 And then we want to play something of our own to then hit them in the face with, right? Yeah. That's kind of the the style that this deck will uh, will employ. So, um, well, following the logic that we need substance, I would probably pick the raider. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I think that that is 
Uh, and do you see now how I go through constructing my deck, just yeah. constantly reminding myself of like, what does this deck do? What does it need? How, do, how is it going to win? And yeah, you couldn't be more right. Uh, we have two AoEs, three AoEs. We have God knows how many single target removal things. <laughs> so we can probably clear the board and then a Raider on an empty board is really good. Yeah. So yeah, Raider for sure here. Okay, um, the Rubian Prophet is like really, really, really good. Um, question is if we ever like need a taunt in this kind of deck, but I don't think we do because we are just going to kill whatever. Yeah, right. The best like, taunt is just an empty board. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll so pick, we'll pick the profit, profit here. Yeah. yeah. Let's put up a little bit of health. <laughs> Gang up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> um, spider tank or Scarlet Crusader? I think it's the spider tank. Uh, um, yep, yeah, spider tank. There's a lot of uh, ping going around with yeah. Ravaging Ghoul, um, the, the flame collar in Mage, so spider tank for me here. Um, well, Stormwind can't be good because we won't have too much on the board, I think. Yeah, this, this one's actually... Uh, so it's not the Acolyte of Pain, even though yeah. that would draw us cards. So we have one card that costs four mana. So picking another four mana card would not be bad. Um, yeah. Looking at the storm window, it is another bigger minion. Um, I think you make a decent read that the storm is not that great in this kind of deck because we will not have too much on the board usually because we, you know, such a high percentage of our cards are, you know, reactive cards. Yeah. So I would be okay with the squid face. And in, in an aggressive deck, I think it would be Stormwind for sure. But yeah, okay. Not necessarily, because Squid Phase is also really good because you can play it in AoE. If they kill it, you get your weapon, you can hit them in the face. Oh, that's true. So Squid Phase is in the uh, really good, uh, really good right. position. I mean, it's another great card. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't think we need healing. Um, so it's either the three mana guy or the seven mana seven seven. I think our curve kind of needs a three drop because we only have one right now or the buccaneer as well maybe deadly poison as well maybe yeah i like how you're looking at that uh so we have three three drops right we have buccaneer poison and a tank okay. which doesn't mean that we have too many it also doesn't mean that we're necessarily lacking it's kind of on that just enough wouldn't mind another one so yeah. Then you want to uh, you want to evaluate whether you want the the fatty more than you want the curve card. If <sighs> Buck Creeper with Qualia and the Shadow Pan, but other than that, I'm I mean the Smith as well. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but so it's a tough call here, but I, I'd go with the fatty in the end. Uh, I think we've just got so much removal. We just want another thing to win the game with, right? We just want to put something on the board. Okay. It's you know it's not pretty, but you know we just we just you know need something to get the job done. So, all right. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not. I, I mean, it's a chicken, of course. But, easy um, chicken. Easy but... chicken. <laughs> um, but memes aside, I think it's either Drake or Burger. Um, Burger is like I sort of look at it as a arcane intellect, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Um, but I think Azure Drake, especially with all of our spells, is just way too good. Yeah, also, if you look at it, it's pretty much Burgle on a stick, right? Because you yeah, play a card of. and gain a card. It's kind of the same with Burgle. You play a card and then you gain two cards, but you lose the Burgle. You don't lose the Azure Drake. Yeah, so value-wise, it's still the same. The Azure Drake draws you, draws you the card. And with this amount of spells in your deck, it is indeed absolutely disgusting we're gonna shadow strike things for six all the time <laughs> yeah, that's... Forward to it. wow okay so obviously this is not your run of the mill deck <laughs> you no. cannot draft this consistently but it does reflect the style that we want it's just not going to have this consistency in terms of how much removal so what what you can picture this kind of deck looking like is a little bit more fat a little less removal the early game removal is looking around on point. I think the early game removal is fairly standard. You know, one backstab, a poison, a buccaneer. Uh, two barbers, though, makes you really good. So maybe, you know, even the early game removal is a little bit above par. Yeah. But the uh, the essence of the deck remains the same. Uh, yeah. It just has really high quality cards. 
But so I'm really, really glad that is that it is such a good deck because um, I think I draft like decks. Uh, sometimes I get like really really lucky, and and I think um, especially in this expansion, this is mm -hmm. what happened to me a lot that I draft like really high value uh, mage decks, for example, yep. um, and I still only manage to get four wins. Okay, like cool. With, so with, with Flame Strike, with Ethereal Conjurer, and all the other looking forward cards. to uh, going with this then. So. The uh, the server you're playing on is Europe, right? Yes. Okay, you can give me an Aten. That's Shady Bunny 2343. Three. Okay. Um... And then after I've got your friend request, you can just queue it up and uh, we'll take this baby for a spin. Ben is oozing with cheer today. Uh, I got it, man. You can go. Oh, it's within. Uh, it's with a while. All right, I'm gonna have to, guys. Hearthstone's gonna be loud, by the way. But you guys, <laughs> you guys asked for this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can turn it down a bit. I might have to mute Hearthstone, just because it's gonna be that loud. All right, we'll go with this. <clears throat> um, Okie dokie. Uh, I friend. got you. You can queue it up. I'll, okay. Uh, I'll get the uh, the name straight. Yeah, man, pretty insane deck. I like it. Pretty good, right? It's uh, it's also great to have this for a coaching session because this is the kind of deck where you have so many options. Uh, obviously, you know, no matter what deck, coaching is useful, but. If, if there's option one till five every turn, there's a lot more value to be gained than whether it's like, oh, shall we play the two drop? Shall we play the three drop? Shall we play the four drop, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think toss everything. Uh, one second, I can't oh, see the okay. hand just yet. Oh, I can use the share screen. Um, yeah, throw it all is fine. Playing against the fellow rogue. Definitely considering, you know, Tomb Pillager because we only have two fours, but I think that our deck has enough, you know, barber to drop and stuff, so. Okay. Go for it. Hmm. All right, pass. Yep, nothing to be done here. Done. Volume now is perfect, you think? Okay, looks good. Can you turn up Louis' mic? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's on 175% volume right now. I also turn it up to the max already. I'm sorry. If, if there if there's like a song or anything, you guys are just gonna like all what phase at the start. So I can't turn it up any louder. I'm I'm gonna damage um, people. Later. I think it's a truck here. Uh, so we have two options, right? The dagger or the truck. Yeah. Uh, if you play the truck, our opponent could um, could trade it in, play his own two drop. Oh. Now play spider tank. If we dagger up, he will probably keep it stealth. But if he daggers, he then kills our spider tank. So I agree with the trog just to bait out the 3-1 out of stealth because we yeah. don't want to give up our tank to that minion and a dagger. Yeah, you're thinking a lot more about these turns than I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just autopiloting C2 drop, play 2 drop. Well, that's, right. you know, that's that's your that's your edge in the arena, right? Or your edge in a card game at all. Just you have time, use it. So. If there's if there's only two decisions, may as well ask yourself, hey, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? So yeah, um, yeah, the spider tank. Once again, probably. But if you dagger up, then your squid phase is ready to die with a with a dagger charge. So just saying, it's an option. That is true, but I think, uh, tempo wise. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the tank bad. here. I agree. I think we have enough value in this deck that we shouldn't get greedy for more value with the squid phase. It's fine. Whoa, what happened with the stats? Did I mess something up? <laughs> well, seems like we're playing someone with a similar deck to ours. Um, I think I would play the squid face. Yeah, I play the squid face here. Not much to do. Kind of a heavy hand. Yeah, but that means, you know, we've just got the good stuff to come. Mm. Oh, 
Not a one health guy? Oh, oh well, maybe a one health guy. <laughs> hmm. Uh huh. See, this is this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I really don't want to play the five mana guy for just the three seven. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, what else can I do? And I have the three and the two for the mana efficiency, but like Fan of Knives doesn't do anything here. No, uh, uh, the two plays are dagger up, trade your guy face into his guy pass. Uh, then he develops a five drop on us. So I think I would just put the Shadow Pan down on the far right and then just push for a face, simply because we have to trust that our deck can outvalue his deck and we just can't fall too far behind on the board. Okay. Yeah. So on the right, yeah, positioning yeah. is also something that I... For, for Betrayal, that is, because we have the Stealth guy in the middle. Don't get... Ah, yeah, makes sense. Okay. That's an unfortunate hit, because that's the one he was going to kill anyway. If you dagger up and trade here, you're going to really get in trouble in terms of life total. I don't think so. I'm a voodoo doctor, sure. Okay. All right. It's a pretty good top deck. Uh -oh. Play the corrupted seer. The thing is, our own guy would die, and it wouldn't really accomplish. Much. One second, man. This is the the sound thing. Now this shit is like way too loud. Oh. <laughs> How did it even get so loud? Where is this coming from? All right. Sorry, man. Go ahead. Um, so I would probably fan of nice. Yeah, fan is good. We'll start with the fan. Mainly to combo up the Abyss, but also kills the 2-1. Ah, unfortunate, but okay. Um, then I would um, put the 4 damage in here and trade the Drake. Just thinking if there's any merit to killing the 5 instead. I think eviscerating the 3-4 and killing the 5-3 is fine. Yeah. Okay. Turn it up more. Yeah. Had him muted, did you die? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, JB, I'm not sure if you got my message in uh, in in chat. I think some uh, I think some shit happened with the uh, with the bot when I uh, when I pulled out the warrior from yesterday. Maybe I. Uh, Click the zero too much or something. I'll I'll check it out afterwards. So he had the pirate memes, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think there's any merit in killing this right now, because we could with uh, Skulker and Dagger. I think that's the one play. And the other play is either playing the seven seven or the six eight. Um, so which which one of the big minions would you play if you would play a big minion? Probably the War Golem. I think that's fine. War Golem on the left hand side. It's uh, it's quite of a. So I think with this kind of style, just removing his minion is totally fine. But I think I just want to test the waters with the 7 8, see what he has. Um, I think it was very close between the uh, Skulker here. It's got a. Oh, he's actually going to kill it? Wow. Sure, go for it. Apparently. We are now, okay with that. Now the Bog Creeper looks really good. Um, yeah, Bog Creeper and... <laughs> I don't know if Cold Blood on the zero one one is ever the play. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely considering it. Uh, I think in our deck we don't need it, so just Bog on the left and pass looks good. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely an option, uh, but our deck doesn't need it. <clears throat> So what I was thinking about was if we if we skulk and dagger his guy, he can't sap our guy, he can't eviscerate our guy. He just passed. Hello? Okay. He did indeed. Oh my god, he has Deathwing. <laughs> um yeah, I would play the Tomb Pillager and go face. Uh, and dagger up of course. Tomb Pillager on the right for sure, dagger up for sure. Now the question here is what what does he have, right? Yeah. 
so the six and your face go face for sure. Uh, it's now just a question, do we ever call blood the imp to push some more? He could have a mind control tech and he's just trying to bait us in. Uh, he could have a vanish. He could have a deathwing like you mentioned. Right now we have five, 11, 12, plus another four, 16 damage coming in next turn. If you don't know, four, 20. I think we're fine holding, yeah. Okay. Just thinking if it makes any sense to try and beat Deathwing if we uh, try to race him. Oh. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, we can easily just kill that, but uh, it leaves the 4-4 four, four behind, yeah, that's kind of not worth, I think. Um, maybe, maybe it is. Really? How would you kill it? Um, if I would kill it, probably with uh, the Tomb Pillager, and afterwards with the Skalka and Buccaneer? No. I would play the Buccaneer between the Imp and the Two Pillager. Okay. Call Blood the Imp, use the Imp to kill his guy. Okay. Then Dagger up. Okay. Backstab the minion. Okay, yeah. Face into the minion. Face. Still plays around MC Tech. Yeah. There's no reason, like, we've got so much removal, there's no reason to just let him kill your bog with the Anubarak, right? Holy shit, this deck is insane! <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. The imp made a lot of value for us, too. Yeah, the imp was great. Alright, so... Yeah, that looks like... <laughs> triple backstab. <laughs> Alright. That's uh, perfect lethal. Now we got one more, because our damn dagger is too. Great. Wow. So... When, when looking at that game, uh, that's immediately one point I can, uh, I can address here, is that you may value your removal too highly. Okay. Because what, essentially, what prompted you to the, um, to the decision to probably just ignore it? Because were, were you planning on ignoring it or were you planning on trading yeah, in I your was, minion? I was, I was actually planning on ignoring it because okay. um, I... I don't know, I didn't think it would be like that great of a trade. Um, maybe because I also didn't uh, see the cold blood thing on the end. Um, and I just looked at the enemy's life total and thought, yeah, me, we can maybe set up like... Well, especially knowing our deck, but also just, you know, looking at the hand and looking at the board, your bog is so much more valuable than any of the removal cards you have in hand, right? Yeah, it's true. It's just... Uh, at that point, that bog is your most valuable asset. You're not just going to throw it into a guy which you can just stop from attacking it very, very easily. So something you could also do is just go for the kill on the first guy, ignore the little guy and go face. But, you, you know, you always kill the first form if it's about to kill a bog creeper, right? Because it's okay. only four damage. Yeah. Okay, great. We can uh, move on to the second game. So that's kind of the first point that I uh, got from this one is that probably valuing removal way too highly. Uh, yeah. Removal is there to be used. Don't sack your minions if you can use removal, unless it doesn't make sense, right? Uh, if you can sack a 1-1 one, one to kill a 2-1, don't assassinate it. Yeah. But, it's you know, just, use um, your removal. Usu yeah, usually um, I don't have too much removal in my decks. I mean, this this deck is like insane uh, removal-wise. Um, but um, usually I don't have a lot of removal, so I just tend to... Um, Keep it for like the enemy bot creeper because I'm always expecting bot creeper on turn seven, which is maybe the. Wrong yeah, but if you have a, if you have a good board to deal with bot creeper, that's also fine, right? Yeah, um, I think I would toss the Azure Drake and the Golem. I think that's right. Go for that. Mm. All right. Let me have a look at the stats here, guys. What I did wrong. Okay, I see what I did wrong. 
We are indeed playing constructed. Mm -hmm. I don't like our options here. They're not great, no. Uh, I'm even considering just eviscerating the 3 2. It's um, definitely on the table, yeah. Other than that, I think it's either Dagger up and Deadly Poison, Blood Cell Raider next turn, but then next turn we can only like kill the White Walker and the 3 2 just kills our Blood Cell Raider. Yeah, I agree with eviscerating the Imp. I think he started out really fast. We just don't want to get wrecked. Sun Fury doesn't do much either. Wow. 36 star. We are playing constructed. Um, I think it's Deadly Poison. Yep, Dagger Poison here to kill the 1-3. And the next turn, we can play double 2 if we want to. We just have a lot more options this way. And we also keep denying him options. He doesn't get to have a nice abusive Sergeant Swing. He doesn't get to set up a Councilman too safely. Yeah. It's kind of these things. But yeah, he went like super, super constructed on us. Probably just Councilman here. Awesome. <laughs> Our imp gang boss. I'm up for an imp gang boss too. Any day. Don't worry, love. The cavalry. Okay. Okay, we can get an insane blood cell raider, <laughs> but I don't think that's the play. Um, I think. Play is. Uh, I don't know if we. Do we actually like want to give the Blood Cell Raid a taunt? Probably. I don't think there's a downside to it, seeing as you can attack it otherwise. Okay. So I, I would be I okay. Would play the Raider, hit into the 2 2, and then taunt up. Yep. I think that's correct. Okay. And the next turn we get maybe Betrayal, maybe a Dagger Barber. Let's see. Alright guys, I see what I did wrong with the uh, run. I just have to see how many warrior wins I had yesterday. So we'll, we'll fix the stats after this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay then. Wow. Nice. That's really good. Um. I think I would backstab the 3 2 and dagger up to kill the 2 1. Maybe even play the barber just on the 1. How about we dagger up, play the barber, use our face in the 3 2 and put the 2 3 into the 2 1? Save oh, the yeah. backstab? Yeah, that works too. That's pretty good. Cool. And I think we've kind of held off his early onslaught of things. He just went like, Rah! and then, you know, the rogue's just like, pew, 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 pew. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Yeah. And we get some AoE left, we get a betrayal left, we get a backstab left. We just but yeah, he went about as ham as you could. Uh which is why we made I don't think a lot of people eviscerate the imp there on turn on turn two, but it's it's good that you mentioned that because especially in a deck like this, you don't have to overvalue your removal. Uh, yeah, but you have to value your life total. <laughs> yeah, kind of... I, I wouldn't have made that play if you hadn't like told me earlier that I shouldn't value the removal that highly. That's and great. it makes a lot of sense because I don't know, like just looking at our hand, I mean it's only removal pretty much. Pretty much, right? Um, I don't think we corrupt the seer, so we have a lot of mana left. So I would always journey below first. I think that's a good start. Yep. Maybe get a nice belcher. Wow. Um, I think in a vacuum, squid face is the best card. But maybe because we need a big dude, we would kick the Anubarak, but I'm not sure. Well, it's still a long time until we get to the Squid Face. I uh, Sorry, until we get to the Anubarak. So I'd pick the Squid Face so we can play it this turn. Okay. 
Yeah. Sorry, you can put him on the board already. Um, anything because of positioning or? No, you just put it down. Okay. Um, then hit the 2-2 two -two and go face probably. Um, I would use my face and the 3 into the 1-1 one, one and put the 2-1 into the 2-2. Two -two. Ah, okay. And then next turn we can still have our options. Yeah, we still have the backstab. <clears throat> I think backstabbing the two was also fine, but then he gets a really good Red Inferno. So it's kind of a hedge here. I, d I don't think I want to go into his turn six with two one health minions. Yeah. That'd be a little bit too good. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, this was a kind of a, um, a difficult decision, to be fair. this deck dude it's pretty good Jesus. um yeah i would backstab the sentient and kill it with the three one um and then i would dagger up and hit with my face into the shield and then um with the four four into the one two maybe we could also use the seer on this turn oh yeah that's true um I like that more, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. It's between the Seer and, and the Dagger here. So um, we would backstab the shield off and then hit the 3-1 into the... No. No, just put the 3-1 into the Sengen, play the Seer, and then kill the Anoyatron. Oh, okay. okay. So this is definitely not the biggest tempo play at all. But the Seer was threatening to be kind of stuck in the hand, and this gives you a fairly reasonable clear. It's just dangerous because we didn't get the dagger up for the uh, squid face. Yeah. Um, I was leaning towards dagger but he barber. Have a ping. He, he doesn't have a ping, that's like the thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Can make that. I don't think we were ever backstabbing this engine there. I think it was either dagger barber to kill it. Oh, Psychotron, oh. sure. Nice. This guy's packing a lot of divine shields. Phew. Um, yeah. We have a lot of potential things to do. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's it's either the Skulker or the Backstab, I think. Um, then Dagger up and then uh, hit the 4-1, do the 3-2. Dagger up always happens no matter what, so yeah. we can start with that indeed. Yeah. Uh... I think I'd probably still value the Skulker's effect quite highly. Uh, I agree with backstabbing the shield off okay. and then putting the 4 1 in and playing the Barber. It gives us a lot of value for our next uh, weapon. Um, do we ever hit face? No. Right. Um, I don't think I would right now. No. Think, and this is why I really wanted those big bodies, those win conditions in the deck. Because yeah. this is kind of the thing, right? He plays something, we kill it. He plays something, we kill it. He plays something, we kill it. And then we need like Valdir, War Golem, Azur Drake, those kind of things. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Well, this is kind of awkward. Um... It definitely is. I mean, we can just like trade it with the barber and our face but then i mean we're dropping to like 12 health and we can't really play anything yeah the, the problem it. right now is that we're playing against the warlock and we don't have enough time our deck isn't giving us the cards we need right now so i would make a 180 here i would just drop the buck drop the skulker put it all face including the weapon wow okay yeah i'm all for that because I don't see ourselves winning if we just kill that Boulder Fist and sacrifice our 3-2. Yeah, I get it. And this way you also have a chance that your Betrayal does something next turn. We've, we're leaving a body alive. So it, it's a little awkward, right? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of making this kind of line with this kind of deck. But the fact that he's a Warlock <laughs> is kind of forcing our hand. What the fuck is going on, dude? Weird game. We're one off lethal right now. Really? Oh, oh we're shit. no we are no longer one off oh, lethal. Oh baby. <laughs> oh right. baby, no way. So the buccaneer goes into the shield first and then we betray the ogre. 
Yeah. Then boom! <laughs> Game. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you felt it coming or what? Okay. All right. Cool. So give me give me a second, Luvi. Let me uh, fix this thing with the bot, and then we'll continue. Yeah. But I think that was a great game because we had that really fine point there, right? So yeah. what should trigger you to make that 180, that switch, right? Where you just go aggressive. Look at how good your chances to win if you don't. So think about what happens, right? So he has five cards in his hand or four, I think five, right? So we kill that ogre. We don't push any face damage. He stays healthy. We've got like, you know, we just drew a Buccaneer. We can't really develop the Skulker, you know? Yeah. Um, so he just plays more things. We run out of life total. Um, and he's not going to run out of cards because he keeps tapping. So at that point, you just say, okay, well, time to go, right? I'm not going to win the long game. Time to just put everything on the board, go aggressive, switch the, uh, switch the pace of the game, and then uh, see if he can deal with that. Uh, and at the same time, you know, it sets up a betrayal. So that's cool. All right, man. Uh, good to go for another one. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Um, I think that just like some of the plays, I really don't like think about it in the way you just described. Um, like it's, um, it's a lot to take. I, I, in I, I don't at know. Once, I'm, right? I'm always looking at yeah. How do I get the most? Well, not really value, but maybe sometimes just how can I? Yeah, push face, go go closer to the win, and 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 yeah, maybe I just need to think about. Well, that that is my number one advice to anyone with, with you know one thing to if you really want to try hard because I get that people just want to relax, play this game, you know, just play the cards, see what happens, and that's fine, right? That's what games are for. But if you want to try hard, if you wanna if you want to be one of the best, then. You know, there is no better way to than just actually going over all the things like, okay, what happens if I do this? What happens if he does this? What happens if this happens? Right? It's just like that gives you so much more free. It's almost like you're getting more information than your opponent because he's probably not doing that. Yeah. Um, I think I would toss the shadow strike. I think I agree. Yeah. With two shadow strikes and two of his raids in the deck, we shouldn't need it straight away. <laughs> this is quite a hand. Holy shit. Um, I think we coin out the two drop, and it's probably going to be the trot. I would coin out the weapon. <laughs> really? Yeah, whenever I have. So, this is kind of the thing, right? What happens if he plays a two three and we coin out the weapon? Uh, we barber and win. No, a two three. A uh, two three? Yeah. Um, then we play the trot. No, we play the blood cell, and the blood cell, blood cell the blood cell will be a three three. Obviously, if he plays a three two, yeah, we just smash him right with the barber. So I think the coin dagger leaves you with the most options. Funny enough, and this is why rogue is such a fucked up class, right? We got four two drops in our hand that we're daggering on <laughs> one. Yeah, I found it as well, JB. I, I have like nineteen wins on my warrior and forty eight losses. I think that's what ruined the stats. <laughs> I messed it up. Yeah, I think it's Barbara kills the thing. Uh, oh, one second. Uh, yeah, we barber. Wreck his guy. Looking good. <clears throat> Such an insane card. Yep. This is why this is my favorite card. <laughs> it's such a good card. Really? Your favorite card? Yeah. In general? I've never uh, skipped the barber in a draft, ever. I'll pick it over anything. It's so insane. Um, yeah. We kill it and we play the 3 4. Or maybe we can even blood say raider. Yeah, I'm just blood. I'm I'm just thinking if that's if that's good. That puts Comment up a ton of pressure, it. right? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like playing blood sail really? and then cold blood the barber. Nice. Yeah, I mean we are a reactive vec, but we got all our aggro in the early game and he is not putting up any fight, so let's just go in. Bam. Yeah, uh, one question. What happened to your smork animation on stream? Well, I think it has something to do with the unknown bug in Arena. Uh, the body is uh, body works with the um, uh, with the client itself, so I think it interacts with that. So, okay. oh, this is totally fine, right? He played a four mana owl, and our Coblot yeah. got four damage face in yeah, as well. Um, I think it's truck and dagger, and. 
kill this guy. We're definitely daggering his guy. Yeah, and then we're pushing seven face. And then we have to ask ourselves, is there any useful thing about taunting up here? I don't, I don't think there is. No. Uh, where are we putting the truck, though? Um, I don't know. It's a warlock. Do they have... Any... No, we have a Sun Fury in the hand. So ah, okay. wh what are you most likely to taunt up? Um, oof. Don't know. I guess it depends on the bot state. Um, yeah. I think from what I can just generally tell, we're more likely to taunt up the truck. So I put that one in the middle. So we have access to taunting left or right. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. And then we can either protect two health by taunting up the right guys, or we can protect the four damage by taunting up the left guys. Okay. Wow. See, wow. Okay. So for instance, on this board, protecting the two health is not too bad. Uh, well, let's see how much damage we have first. Uh, uh, seven, nine, ten, right? Yeah. Um, I think I've just played the Drake. And we could make the trade with these two in here, but I think turn six he might have the six mana six six guy. And honestly, I I just play it safe here and shadow strike the maiden, kill the maiden, push face with everything. Okay. Don't think there's any reason, and then we can talk about whether we want to play into mind control tech or not. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think I would just dig out. Probably. So our opponent's on 5 health, which means that either the 4 or the other guys need to live. Yeah. Uh, if he plays a Hellfire here, he goes to 2 life. That's not really an option. I think I would taunt up. Yeah, okay, he's done. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking that it's more likely that he is going to drop taunt rather than an MCT. So I think I would have probably developed another minion to uh, make sure we, get, we push through the... Uh, we push through the taunt. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that game was kind of straightforward. I think we just draw insane. Well, I don't think that was straightforward at all. Uh, we used the Cold Blood on turn three instead of playing a tank. I think yeah. that, you know, 90 plus percent of the players is not going to Cold Blood on that turn. But it's all about asking what's what's he going to do about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and apparently playing a four mana owl was his uh, best reply. And I'm like, oh, a four mana owl to kill my cold blood that already hit your face once. Yeah, sure, that's an amazing deal, I'll take it. Uh, that was spell breaker. Sorry? Okay. All right, yeah, that was that was really good. So that, that was just the point where you want to um, ask yourself what your opponent could do about, uh, about a situation. Because I feel like a lot of the times people play around phantom solutions, right? They're like, oh, I'm not gonna cold blood preemptively because he might punish it. It's like, yeah, but what is he gonna do? It's like, okay, I like the, the biggest punish there is a dark bomb. And okay, then on turn four, he plays a dark bomb instead of a four drop. Maybe a two drop, maybe not, we don't know. And your cold blood has dealt four face regardless. So that's not a terrible deal. And that's like pretty much the best case solution. Maybe, maybe him implosioning your barber, that's even better. But uh, most of the time, that's just gonna connect face and then face again. So especially in this expansion where removal is scarce, you can, you know, yeah, we have a shit ton, right? You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say, but for normal classes, uh, yeah. removal is scarce. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty on board with those kind of plays. So try to consider them a little bit more. Okay. Uh, just the aggressive line. Yeah, that's great, man. All right, then I'm gonna queue up for the yep. next one. Good to go, man. Yeah, that's a great pointer because sometimes I have to remind myself as well what what exactly I'm doing. Uh, I think that's a big point. I always ask myself, what's he going to do about it? Rather than just assume that he's going to have something. Yeah, I think that's like the kind of thinking I have to do a little bit more. Um, hmm. Okay. I mean, it's a nice hand, no doubt. Um, I don't know if I would keep both barbers, but I think I would. Yep. Just like, you know, we don't pass barbers, we also don't mulligan barbers. Okay. And the Shadow Strike goes back. <laughs> yeah, it kills Water Alley, but I'd still throw it, yeah. We already have two Barbers in our hand, so we don't want to make it too inflexible. Yeah. So, like, right here, when I have a hand like this, um, I'm completely clueless on how, in, in what order I play my cards. 
Well, it usually starts by pressing the hero power button. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he plays. Maybe the trog is correct. I guess I'm undervaluing like the, just the hero power because, like, with every other class, it's like a yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the this is the big part. This is the the big thing. Okay, so here we have options, right? Because yeah. he he didn't coin, and we have trog. So there's an option to play the trog. So. I want to make this distinction really big because in the last hand we coined dagger saying you know there's nothing he can do that will make us feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Now if we dagger and he coins say a uh, a spider tank that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, so I think here I would go for the trog. See what he does about it. Just removal is kind of annoying, but it's fine. Um, I think I want to journey below first um, because we're playing something to mana ish, probably, and it's either hero power. Why are we not playing Buccaneer and Dagger this turn? Really? Ah, because. Uh, eh. This is a really good point. This is going to increase your average by a lot. So okay. the play for me, there is there is no way on hell that I'm doing anything else but Buccaneer Dagger. So explain to me what brings you to wanting to journey there. Um, mana efficiency mostly because I feel like if I just play the Buccaneer, it's kind of a dead card because he's just going to ping it and then maybe coin. Is he is draw. he going to ping on turn three here? Maybe I don't know. Is that not good for us? Yeah, it, it would be good for All us. Right, okay. Let's play the Buccaneer and the Dagger. So this is this is once again uh, comes back to that point of like what's he weapon, what's right? he gonna do? Yeah, we hold the dagger. With two barbers in the hands we're holding his baby for sure. Yeah. yeah. Death spite next turn. Seems nice. Okay. It's probably one of the best minions he could have played here. Hmm. I think I would still go with the Barber and probably Bloodsail Raider and then um, hit the face into the Harvest Golem and then kill the 2-1 with our 2-1. Barber on the left hand side, Raider on the right hand side, face into his minion, I agree. And then let's think. Uh, next turn we have five mana. We're probably going to want to Drake, so we're probably not going to want to redagger. Yeah. I agree with the trade. Okay. I don't think we want to let him trade into the three-two. Yeah. So this is just in. Do this is the thing, right? By daggering on turn uh, three, yeah. we are still so far ahead on the board. This is why Barber, I feel, is is broken, right? Yeah. So broken. Ah, Shadow Strike, come back. Oh. No top deck. Uh, yeah, it's awkward. Um, but we can't just hit it with the face and the auto barber and push by face and play the Drake. Or we could play the Drake first, see what we get. If we get a backstab, we. Yeah, this one's kind of tricky. I. Usually I don't like Drake this early, but I think I'm okay with it. Drake on the left. And then we just get a backstab, we're good at the game, and then bam! Yeah. Close. Um, so the 5-3 goes face, no matter what. Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really limits our options if we hit it with our face. Yeah. The problem is that he can hit our face if he wants to, so I would still kill it. Yep. Okay. Like we're n we're not your average rogue deck against mage. We act we actually have some late game stuff to tango with this guy. <clears throat> oh, by the way, JB, um, we got like a pretty cool idea. Uh, let let me know if you can hear me. By the way, JB, if you're if you've got audio uh, before I do this explanation over the <laughs> audio. <laughs> um, this has been amazing just watching this deck unfold this is just this is almost like a privilege to be part of this run even <laughs> wow we have so many options again like 
Jesus Christ, dude. Good luck. Have fun with it. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of different options, but I don't think um, playing the barber and, and hero powering will do us any good since we're frozen. So would probably just play the Tomb Pillager and uh, Eviscerate. Go face for nine. Yep, Tomb Pillager on the far left, because I think the uh, Drake is your worst minion, funny enough. And then, yeah, Eviscerate this guy and push nine. It's looking really good. Hey, dude, we're playing Constructed. Didn't you know? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Now, because he's Mage, he's still... Uh, he still has a fairly decent chance yeah, at this game, true. you know, because there is, you know, Blizzard here, Flame Strike next turn, and that definitely just equals the board. If he doesn't have it, then yeah, we're in a. Did he? Did he coin? Uh, he did no? coin. He did coin. Yeah, I think so. Or did he not? No, Maybe didn't he didn't. Did. No, he bolted on two. He harvested oh, gold on two. Ooh, he could have oh, it no, here. Oh no, we played it to Flame Strike. It's all ogre. <laughs> oh. This was still the right play, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think he has coin. Yeah. That's good. I mean, that means we'll know. Yeah. There All it right. is, baby. There it is. Now. Oh, All right. Um, hmm. He might still have a big removal, which kind of makes me eh about the. Hmm. Well, if he didn't have coin, we win the game. Because we could raid or dagger and he couldn't do both. <sighs> yeah, um, we can maybe also just journey below to see if we get maybe a minion. Uh, I, th I think we go with a raid or dagger here and raid just yeah, just see whether he has it or not. Oh, okay, JB. So uh, we got a bunch of pictures. Uh, like I, I would hold it. No, no, no. It's fine, dude. It's fine. Uh, so we got we got a bunch of pictures, and we're thinking about just uh, if that's possible at all, letting Butty change between pictures when we get a different class that we're playing. So uh, let's say we're playing Druid. There's like this this really nice picture of Malfurion, and there's like a nice box where the score can go in. So is that something you can make happen or not? So he did not have the big removal. Hooray! That's good. It's really good. Um, however, he does play this guy, the Ethereal Conjurer, which... How do we kill it? We can't really kill it. Can we? Yeah, this is a little bit awkward. Uh, so, I think here we start things off with a journey and see what's up. Okay. Wow. Um, Karen Blatoof is yeah. insane. Yeah, pick our boy Karen. Uh, this one's tricky. I think we're re-daggering, just because that's pretty good for our Valdir. Okay. And the 8-8 goes face no matter what. Face, okay. Oh yeah. Uh, and then we're going to play Auto Barber on the right hand side. Right, okay. Sun Fury on the right hand side. Okay. And then we're going to kill the scientist. Okay, so that's mainly just me playing that turn because there's too much yeah. to do. But we're going to talk through that turn now. So what's my uh, thinking there? My thinking is how do I get this raider to hit his face and how do I get that 6-3 to not hit my guy back? And I think yeah. this is on the go, the best <laughs> I could go for it. Uh, that's, that's annoying, but at the same time, sure. Uh, man, if he's got mirror entity, we're kind of annoyed. Yeah. I think just because of Mirror Entity, I would play the Smith. Um, I would agree with you, yeah. I was trying to think if we could get around the Mirror Entity, but this is fine. Yeah. Oh, this guy's yeah. such a dick. <laughs> Holy shit. Just give us the win, damn it. Yeah, um, this guy is still... Do we ever hit face and just read Uh, Yeah, I'm just thinking if we ever hit his guy. Oh, yeah. But we still have the backstep, so I'm thinking no, but I'm not sure. Mm, this one's interesting. Yeah, I think hitting him in the face and re is fine. 
you're gone for a while, but it's possible, sure. All right, so JB, we have we have all the images already. Uh, so could you could you just let me know when we can sit together? If not to fix the images, just to fix just to fix some other things. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Sweet. Yeah. All right. So we need to think whether we want to uh, backstab that or not, right? Um, yeah, we would take four in the face, we go down to 15, but I think that's still okay. Yeah, 15, he's got 6, 12, 13, that's fine. Yeah, face into his guy uh, is fine. And Shadow Strike. Him. Shadow Strike it, yep. And then the Cairn always comes down. Yeah. And then we have two plays, right? We could backstab his smith and kill his smith. Yeah. Or we could go face for four. Let's see what he does about it. Oh yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. I, I like the face play more, I think. Thinking about it here. For five. Because we don't have like much meat in our hand anymore. So I think we need Yeah, to... I think you backstab his smith, but go face for four. Because he's gonna use that to trade and we don't want it to live. Yep. Cause he's gonna kill your smith no matter what, right? Yeah, he's not right. he's not gonna kill the Karen because the Karen respawns. Yeah. So there is kind of the thing where you keep the Smith alive, backstab the Smith, but that's not gonna work because he's gonna he's gonna kill the Smith. Yeah, well we are dead to Pyroblast, which I wouldn't be too surprised to be honest. Uh oh. Yes, oh, that's baby. pretty big. Whew. Dodged a bullet. So this game we could have definitely played slightly different, but it was it was a tough call regardless. Please don't. Oh. <laughs> Fire the cannon. All right. More pirate memes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. baby. So glad we win off this guy. The flame strike back to back is like the most infuriating shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Good book. Sometimes lucky. Yeah. Backstab your own smith, he's on three. You can't use your face twice, Gladius. Alright, let's take a second because that was quite the game. <laughs> <laughs> um so the main the main issue really there was that we didn't keep track of his coin, or rather I didn't keep track of his coin, because we may have played slightly different. Because um, that game was on complete lockdown, uh, if not for Coin Flame Strike, because then we could have just played, um, we could have played Valdir Raider Redagger, and then we'd be on, uh, we'd be on six. Yeah. Uh, and then if he Flame Strikes, the Raider survives. We hit him in the face for eight, and he can't really win. So, Whew. all right, man, I'm I'm good for the next one. It's, uh, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> mm. man, so many pirates. What's up with that? But but in in like my my best run in uh, Whispers of the Old Gods was the the eleven win uh, warrior deck, and in there I had like the insane pirate synergy too, with with the <coughs> with the captain with the raider. Oh, those are the with... best, right? Where you get the memes going with the cannon. Yeah. And I mean, I got the memes to eleven wins, so I was really happy about that. Um, I think we toss everything but the poison. Mm. I agree. Yep, looks good. <sighs> Paladin is kind of a good matchup for this particular deck because we just have so much removal. Yeah. Um, it's just about our start. If our start is, is bad, then obviously you can snowball on us. But I'd say this rogue deck has even more chance than usual to beat Paladins. So. I don't like our starting hand that much. No, at least, you know, we have the best hero power in the game and we have stuff. Um, I would just pass here. I think so too. We don't have a lot of one mana cards, so if we coin dagger, we don't get to like one drop poison or something. So pass is fine for me. Yeah. I 
like the the rogue deck we had yesterday had uh, the combi chow in the hand quite a bit with the poison so then coin dagger poison combi chow next turn was quite good hmm. dagger up kill the one one yep dagger kill the one one pretty straightforward here we're about as reactive as it gets with this hand this is just you know like all right ready ready to rock just <laughs> Give me something. Give me something bring to work it, with. Bring it. Yeah, bring it, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. Right. He brought it. Okay. <coughs> what the? Okay. Um. Uh, do we ever coin out the tomb pillager? I think. I think the dagger goes into the two one. Not always. No. I, I think you have two plays here. It's either re-dagger poison, kill the spawn and pass, or it's backstab the spawn, uh, or it's uh, eviscerate the spawn after you've killed the 2-1. Those are your two options here. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. I don't know. I, I just don't know how good the spawn is of a card. If it's it's but, I pretty mean, ridiculous. I, I think I like the face into the 2-1 and then just uh, eviscerate the 2-2. Two -two. Because if you drop the pillager here and he true silvers, it's yeah, it's really just a yeah. shit fest, right? He just gets rolling. It's really annoying. And pass. Yeah, we just pass. Yeah. Coin pillager is like the worst play you can make here in a, into a paladin, because that's what paladin wants, right? Paladin wants you to play something into their thing, and then they yeah. buff it, then they true silver, then they remove or whatever. Uh, okay. So we're just not gonna do that. Um, we could deadly poison it down, but that wouldn't help us develop anything on the board yeah so here we can think about tomb pillager because this true silver would cost five and we don't have to sacrifice our coin uh, i would even consider coining out the spiteful smith yeah i'm looking at everything here so next turn we're gonna have five or six mana i like just the poison here just kill this thing yep really Yep. Okay. And then next turn we can probably go Tomb Pillager Eviscerate, clear the board. And then we develop something while clearing his board. Okay. So it's just like against Paladin, right? This is why Rogue's so good against Paladin. He plays something, we kill it. He plays something, we kill it. We wait for the swing turn where we get to develop without him having anything, and then he doesn't get the buff. And then okay. you have the board and it's safe. Um, are ah. there any like easy reads um, on when the swing turn is? Uh, yeah, just look at a turn where you're likely to clear his board and develop something. That's okay. that's a swing turn. Okay. This is really annoying. This is why stealth is good against Rogue, because yeah. we, were, we were looking forward to killing his things. Um, I think we could Tomb Pillager and give a taunt like with the coin. That's um, what I'm considering, but I'm not sure how much we want that um, to burn our coin. If the Pillager dies, we get another coin, though. Yeah. I think that's fine, taunting of the Pillager. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then we're assuming that he's going to divine shield this to kill our guy. And then we have options. Yeah, we hold the weapon. Right? Definitely holding the weapon, yeah. Hey, what's up, Krampus? It's pretty good. No divine shield. Nice. Wow. It's rather tame. Pretty happy with that. Good old draw lasts, just in case he draws Archer <laughs> Protector. Um, okay. Well, Fan of Knives against Paladin is insane. I mean, I played Paladin. <coughs> it's usually pretty good, yeah. I always hate it. So, what's the two options you see here? Um, I think one option is to coin the Bog Creeper. That's one of them, yeah. The other option is just to... Ah, wait a minute. Um, I can play the Spiteful Smith and give this guy a cold blood and kill the Maiden of the Lake. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's do that. And then use our face into the 1-1 one -one to protect our guy. Okay. And this is the swing turn we were talking about. We clear his board so he does not he does not have anything to buff and now we are in control of the board. So yeah. it's that patient play that's just like a little longer, a little longer, a little longer, and you know, he didn't get to use cards like uh, Seal of Champions or Kings or Argent Protector, apart from the stealth turn. Which, you know, ideally he wouldn't have, so then we don't give him anything. No. 
that's fine. That's completely fine, dude. What are you doing? Um, I mean, we have a pretty good betrayal here. We do, we do. Let's see what we do after that. Uh, I agree that the betrayal happens, so you can just betrayal the 2-1 and we'll go from there. Uh, what are we doing after that? Um, we could fan of knives and just egg her up. Yeah, that's pretty slow, but it might be the play. Uh, or we can uh, trade a guy, dagger up, and kill the other guy. Or maybe dagger up, kill this guy. Uh, depends on... No, we want the five health on the smith, probably, right? We so probably... We hit here, and then with the, mm. with the dagger on the 2-1, and then 6 face. Yeah, I like the uh, 4 into the 1-1, one, one, dagger into the 2-1. Barber, six phase. That's really good. So this was a clutch call because I think that Fan of Knives isn't bad here. Uh, but this gets your Smith enraged really cheaply. Yeah. Like only one damage. It develops the Barber for sure, um, which you can't really if you fan because you can dagger. Mm. This is the one thing our deck lacks, like actual hard removal. But... Yeah. No assassin. Uh... But everything else in the game. Um, how much damage do we have? 22 right now. Pretty close. Close enough for me to open things up with an Azure Drake, I think. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Mm, I'm gonna count again just to make sure I didn't miss the lethal. 10, 13, 17, no, 22. <clears throat> I would be okay with the Fan of Knives, yeah. Fan of Knives is fine. Gets rid of the shield easy. And then... We could hit our face and the barber into it just to be safe. I would go all face, including all the face. weapon, yeah. Okay. I'd like to see him save himself out of this one. Because Paladins get increasingly more annoying in the late game. They have like really high value cards as well. Uh, with an eviscerate left, it's gonna be quite difficult. He he would need consecrate here, and that's still not enough. That hurts. God damn, <coughs> cold blood is such a good card. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I and this is not even the style where it's great in. <laughs> yeah. You should see the style where it's great in. Yeah, we just win. Yeah, okay. GG. All right, pretty good five zero. Shady smells paladin blood. I do, I do. <laughs> uh, Danny Boy says, Shady, I really enjoy your teaching style. This is much more enjoyable than your regular co-ops to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a paid coaching session. So these these kind of things, they take a lot of energy out of me, but I really like doing them, right? So I really like uh, to make sure that we cover all bases, that we, uh, that we get as good at the game as possible. Uh, but I usually have them off stream because it's like you saw now, you know, I have a little chat with JB, I'm fixing the, the volume and stuff. Usually I just like to be not distracted and have everything, uh, everything centered towards just the game. Uh, but Luvi was so kind to uh, do it on stream, seeing as otherwise our times didn't really work out. So that's great. All right, Luvi, I'm, uh, I'm good to go for the another one. Yeah, one second, I just wanted to uh, write down a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, take notes, man, take notes for sure. Playing. So look for the swing turns, this is something I wrote down, um, then... Um, that's uh, that's mainly yeah. versus Paladin, but definitely something you can apply in most other classes, but mainly versus Paladin, just because it's always... So, I mean, um, that, um, that Pillager play, that was just so beautiful, right? Because the entire chat also wanted to pillager there and just like no guys this is what you don't do against paladins because this is what a paladin wants is like oh you just coin a guy into my guy cool let me just you know buff my guy kill your guy or true silver your guy and i'm winning now whereas if you remove his guy the paladins they're like but but me can't do anything that's not fun right yeah all right cool um swing turns the other things we said earlier were um don't value the removal too much mm -hmm. yeah um, another point is ask yourself what an opponent is going to do about your play and then see whether that reply is feasible of course there are always you know the crazy oh he's gonna prep 
do this, do that, uh, do crazy AOE stuff. Uh, but, you know, realistically speaking, what's he going to do about it? And if the realistic answer isn't there, go for it. And for the draft, um, look at the deck. What does the deck need? Yeah, uh, think about what purpose your cards serve in certain archetypes. Uh, yeah. Cold Blood being a good example. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, good to go, man. Just let me know if you need a break, if you need to go to the bathroom or something. No, I'm fine. All right. Um, what do you think is like, um, other than Mage and Rogue, what is like the best arena class right now? Warlock, hands down. It's really? Just, yeah. Mage, Rogue, Warlock. And I feel like it's not even open for discussion because it's such a huge difference. Like if it's pretty close then. But I feel like the people that know how to play Warlock and have play enough Warlock, they will second this. They will say that Warlock is number three right now. And then Druid number four, I think that's kind of a flavor pick. I think it's correct, of course. You know, I think that everything yeah. on my list is correct. But that's one I, I'm open for discussion, right? My, my, my Druid runs weren't really good. And I had like two pretty good Warrior runs. So I would put Warrior maybe at three or four. Hmm. Well, that's the thing, right? That's, that's still a fairly low sample size. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Buccaneer and Barber? Yeah, Buccaneer yeah. and Barber. I had, I had a similar thing where I had like eight warrior runs and warrior was like my number four class or something and then when i increased the sample size a little bit we saw the inconsistencies come out yeah and then it kind of trickled down towards uh yeah and fronts, i had a lot of weapons like the nazoth first made this new card insane mm, yeah dominates yeah the good warrior decks are insane yeah i lose the warriors a lot more often than i used to um i think i have learned <laughs> that coin hero power is a good option. I like that coin hero power for sure. <laughs> mm. Is Warlock better than Paladin? Hands down, Angel Seeker. In this expansion, there's just I feel like there's not even a debate. You saw that Paladin as well, right? He's just going going to the grinder, just getting his ass kicked. Damn it! Um, right here, I would probably just play the Trog. I think so. I just want to make sure that's what we do. Uh, if we play the Trog, he hits it, he pings it. We can still stab his guy, Buccaneer Dagger. That would be fine. If he plays a 3-drop and he doesn't reveal, we probably Buccaneer Dagger, trade his 3-drop. His turn 4, he probably trades the Buccaneer, plays a 4-drop. We play Double Barber. We have 2, 3, 4 damage. Yeah, you kind of lost me there. Not enough. <laughs> so if, if his turn four is like a four health minion, that's fine. <laughs> All right, let's play the Trog. Um, this is Rogue, right? Rogue is so much fun, yeah. man. There's so much thinking ahead. Um, so, do we ever hit face? Because we are no, probably no, 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 going no. to... Because uh, there's, a, there's a decent chance we'll play the Barber next turn. Okay. Um, just because him he can kill the Buccaneer for free here. Oh wow, okay, this is this is good. This is a really good option. Because this makes it less of a problem, because now the Trog doesn't die. Yeah, that's true. So he like, can play he can play a turn four uh thingy majiggy, uh, a turn four kinda light your fire, but that's fine. Um I think we play the Buccaneer. Yep, Buccaneer we dagger. Now we kill the sapper. <clears throat> Thank you for that, spy boy. Cool. <coughs> we'll see whether he wants to play the uh, AOE. No. Oh, wow. Sure. Goes for the two drop. Drop now, stupid. The barber is looking pretty good. The only question is, do we kill the 2-3? I don't think that's worth it. I think I would just kill the 2-1, re-dagger and play the barber. Probably. Uh, the other option is double barber, kill the 2-3 for tempo. 
Then he kills one barber. I don't like that. I like killing the 2 1 and the re dagger barber. Yeah. yeah. Next turn, most likely backstab and shadow pan. Yeah. Which is quite good. Holy shit. Wait a minute, that's insane. <laughs> yep. It's even better if you coin it. It's a turn 4 Bolt of Ogre. Yeah. Alright, there's something to backstab. Yeah, um, I think I would backstab the 4 4, kill it, and play the Ogre. That's most likely the line. Just want to make sure we're not missing anything. I think everything else is just like too awkward. Well, I mean, there is something along the lines of Sun Fury, Evis the 4 4, kill the 2 2, so that's not terrible. Uh, we're probably going to go with the Shadow Pan line just because it's so much tempo, but I always want to make sure because against Mage, I like to play my big minion on turn 6, not turn 5. Because I'll tell you what happens, right? If we do this here and he uh, kills Polymorph. it. Yeah. Polymorph for Fireball, right? Yeah. And then it's our turn six, we play small minions and any flame strikes, it's really awkward. Yeah, but right. it's still correct to do it, just because the other the alternative is a little bit too slow. Alright. Cool. But these are great things to think about. Against Mage, you always want to keep in mind how am I going to approach the flame strike turn? Yeah. And do I want to throw my big minion out there to get damaged? Not quite. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. um, I think our face always goes into the two-two. No, not at all. Really? Okay. Um, then maybe we can barber, eviscerate the six-six, and hit in with our face, or maybe just play the protector. So uh, right. your face goes into the 6-6 six, six for sure. Let's start with that. Okay. Then you re-dagger. Barber. Eviscerate the 6-4. And trade the 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Cool. I think the protector here may have been better just to set up taunt. It was, yeah. It's kind of awkward. It was a difficult call to make. Cool. Oh. It's not the worst card. So, oh wow. <laughs> uh -oh. What if he's got the same one? That'd be quite funny. Like I was um, kind of shying away maybe from the barber because uh, we might want to... Yeah, next so time. that's the thing, right? But I think the taunt may be too useful. <laughs> Okay, now he pinged our dude to four, which makes me think he has a flame strike. I think it's mainly because if we would kill the three four, then he can ping it. Ah, okay, yeah, true. Uh, um, but yeah, lots of options again. I would hit the two one with a face first because maybe noble sacrifice, just to see where we're at. Mm, let me think on this one for a sec. If it's then Avenge, we'd have to sacrifice our Panda, which wouldn't be the end of the world. If it gets blocked, this goes in here. Sure, face into the two ones, fine. Okay. It's mm, kind of scary. <laughs> All right. Um, play the Drake, see what happens. Panda trades into the three, four. Uh, face face. Play repentance, uh, pass. Repentance and pass. Okay, cool. Sorry, that was a really difficult turn. So there's a lot of things to factor in uh, because it's a random secret. So I did not want my raider to get repentanced. I think that was the main thing. That's why I wanted to play the Drake instead. Uh, so many things with ordering there. So um, what's what's left now, secret wise? Um, sacred trial. Um, competitive mean? spirit. Oh yeah, true. Eye for an eye has been tested as well. Yeah. I think it's sacred trial and competitive spirit left. Um. Okay. Right here, I th think we play journey below first. Journey below is okay. And right here, I would pick the taunt. Yep. Or or the golem. 
No, taunt is good. Taunt keeps us alive. And then uh, kill the die doggy with our face. Um, Maybe. <laughs> we're getting kind of low. Let's yeah, see. we we have to start thinking about whether it's better to preserve the health. And I think it might be. Uh, yeah, I think I would put the Drake into the two two. Okay. The barber into the murloc. Go face with my face. Play the raider, re dagger. I think that's fine. That's a tough call to make, really. But I think two health on the Drake is probably not a super, super relevant. Yeah. Okay. Not super relevant indeed. I'm glad. Wow. I can even. I can even choose to not um, re dagger. Um. This is quite oh. scary. This is all about how likely. We think we're about to win the long game. I think we have to go for the long game because we have five cards in hand and he only has two. Yeah, but he's a mage, so mages are never out of it. Um, yeah, that's true. Because there is a play where we taunt and then push eight phase. Oh, that's true. But, you know, then he's three damage away from killing the Tarn. Uh, still. I think I would play Tomb Pillager and Torrin and hit face maybe. Yeah, I'd play the Torrin and the Tomb Pillager and then go face for seven. Um, anything for for um two three in the middle. Two three in the middle. Okay. Yeah, and then just go face. Um, face into the yeah, face. Yeah, face, face, face. So it's a difficult call, right? Because you can AOE us now. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Kind of annoying. Yep. Okay. He may kill the 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. Okay, we're good. As long as he did this, I'm really happy with what just happened. Yeah. This is really no, I good was, for us. I was just really concerned. I already saw the Flame Waker just hitting us twice in the face and we lose the game. But okay. This is looking okay-ish if we fan of knives i think we always fan of knives uh just uh making sure we do what happens if we don't this kills this this kills this fan of knives is okay yep. oh best card in our deck. seven eleven yeah. That's still really awkward. Yes, it is. Um, I would kill the Flame Waker for sure, though. Yeah, I think the 5 3 yes. kills the 2 3 every time. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. We just have an option here. Uh, I would play the Squid Face on the far right, okay. taunt the Squid Face and the uh, Tomb Pillager, call blood, oh, oh, and the tomb call blood the Ooze. I go face, face, face. Go bloody use, go face. Okay. okay. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have used the dagger, but that's my bad. I, I think I. Yeah, sorry, it was kind of the ordering that really got to me. No, no worries. Yeah. Yeah, this is not good. It took too much time and the positioning was off. That may, that may cost us a match. Oh, no. We'll see. It's probably gonna cost us the match. Um, we can vanish and spiteful smith, which I don't feel terrible about. I think playing both minions is also an option, but that also gives him the option to ping the grim patron, and I don't think I'd like that. He's always gonna have the option to ping the grim patron. Uh, I would play both the minions. Yep. Man, it was a difficult turn. Yeah, it was a trash turn by me. It's pretty much the worst thing you could ever do, but it's all right. I'm going to chalk it up to just not... Yeah, it's fine. Can't even chalk it up to anything. Yeah, he 
got lucky with a quick shot. Yeah, it no, he didn't get it. It was just it was just poor play. There was no reason to find yeah. an excuse Not or anything. Sure. It was just poorly played by me. So, yeah. Is he just trying to be him a little bit? Maybe. He's got enough with the fireball without the ping, so it might still be BM. I think it's a fireball and he's just playing around. Not nope. crossbow. Sure. Huh. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Um. I think we are going to have to play Vanish this time. As much as it's. Yeah, we're probably gonna do that. Only question is, do we want to hit face or kill, like, I, I don't know, killing one of the patrons doesn't really do much. So no, definitely not killing one of the patrons. We're just thinking whether we are killing the Flame Waker. I think four face is more interesting. Okay. Um, and then, then uh, vanish. Vanish. Coin Spite will smith. That gives us an option for lethal fairly uh, likely. Kill three patron, play Skulker. He's still left with a 3 2. You can clear, you can't. Oh. Wait a minute, did he just kill himself? He just, he just killed, killed himself. himself. Yeah. Well, you can't clear with the dagger, but you really want to push face there, guys. He just fucking killed himself. All right, I'm taking that. Sure. All right, cool. So, um, I'm going to take a okay. second and we're really going to analyze that, um, that turn uh, where I fucked it up. So, I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to pull up the replay. So, just give me okay. a second. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think this is. Uh, it's always good to get that out of the way because I'm, um, I'm. I'm very unhappy with how I played that, but it's also fine. I know. I know what caused it. There was just a lot of stuff going on, so I'm quickly gonna pull up the replay so we can go through that turn step by step and what we should have done. Because the reason why I'm so disappointed with that particular turn was because I, I, I knew what I was doing was wrong and I still did it. It's just, yeah, sometimes I have that moment where I make a play because it's flashy, but it's not right. Uh, put this on here. So uh, the play that we are... So first of all, this game was pretty tough overall, but the play I really want to highlight is this line. This is the line where we don't need to. So. What should we have done? This was a really long turn as well. A lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Can you see the board? Yeah, okay. I see. So, first of all, it's not it's not very um, it's not very likely that the fan of knives. Sorry, it's not it's not like a given that fan of knives is being played here. So, because you could also just trade into the flame waker trade into the nine one. And yeah. then he has the Spellbreaker left. Uh, there's a lot of options here. I think the Fan of Knives is okay though, because it gives us a little bit of easier time to full clear. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to after we fan. Okay, we fan now and we've drawn a Cold Blood. I'll put this over here. Um, ba -bum -ba -bum. We've got seven mana. What do, you, what do you do at this point? What are you thinking? Um, well, like right here, I, I mean, in the... In at the moment, I really wasn't sure because um, I figured because he only had like one card in his hand, mm -hmm. I was leaning towards just full clearing. And, and would you full um, clear by taking three or by taking two? By taking two. So you would sacrifice the pillager? Yeah. Okay. That's um, not and terrible. That, that, that would be kind of a rough call, but I think behind that we could like dagger up, play the squid face, which would have lost. And oh no, that was after he played the kraken, right? Yeah, kraken, kraken's already used uh, at this point. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think the right play from here is indeed to kill the three three, kill the two two, uh, kill the two three, uh, and then dagger squid face coin taunt up the squid face because uh, yeah. you're gonna get a coin from your pillager. Ooh. Yeah, so yeah, looking yeah. at the play a little bit longer, uh, there was no reason to go aggro. Like we had the board, we were fine. Yeah. Uh, but it's just you know, 
it was a sacred trial on the board and I knew it was sacred trial or, you know, we kind of assumed it was sacred trial. So I was like, yeah, I don't really want to play into it. And then, you know, we ordered it wrong and I kind of just went like, well, fuck it. I've right? kind of messed up half the turn already. Yeah. So, uh, but it's, you know, it's good to look back at these and just, it's more from a peace of mind. I'm just um, like, all right, that's <laughs> okay. what we should have done. Yeah. Um, I also like, don't know what sacred sacred trial does because like, oh, okay. LOE -L -L I, I didn't play at all. So, so we call it laser trap. Uh, whenever yeah. opponent plays a fourth minion, it gets lasered. Just ah, dies. I see. Okay, okay. That's what happens. Yeah. All right, but six and zero, oh, looking very good. Yeah, it's a very crisp deck. I'm uh, I'm good to keep going. Do you have enough time, by the way, to finish one, or do you have stuff to do? Uh, no, I I got all day. Man. Okay, very good. Because looking forward to this. All right. Yeah, happy. Uh, this is why this is why I charge fifty dollars as well. I, first of all, I don't think fifty dollars is that much for the value, but uh, I want to be able to take my time. I don't want to say like, hey guys, it's twenty five dollars yeah. an hour. I just like no, it's fifty dollars a session, and then we take our time. If it's two hours, it's two hours. If it's three hours, it's three hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> right here, I don't know if we keep the trail against against warlock but i don't think so i would pass everything if our hand looked a little cleaner maybe but we're looking for the barbers we're looking for buccaneer yeah. so i throw it all shady how about the vanish turn playing double fives uh you don't push any damage if you uh, play double five sarah because you have to kill his uh you have to kill his patron so that's why double uh double five in my opinion is not good i think we pass so against a warlock i usually take the chance and play the buccaneer on turn one. Oh, okay yeah because if he wants to coil on turn two that's fine that's a two mana coil yeah that's true perfect i accept your donation yep. um dagger up kill it Dagger kill it, two face. Now he may have the coil because he just looked for it, but that's yeah. fine. We've got our value from our minion. So against Druid, against Rogue, against Mage, you don't do this because you're just hero power. But against all the other classes, I'm uh, I'm always willing to take the gamble. Yeah, makes sense. Oh baby, we're getting into the good stuff now. <laughs> we are indeed. Okay, so we can full clear this guy, but I don't know how much we want to do that. Yeah, I don't think that's too good indeed. We could also play the Blood Cell Raider, hit face with <coughs> maybe Dagger as well to coin Redagger. This is a this is a really tough one. It's but, really, really but tough. like turn four, we have no plays. <coughs> Three five drops in our hand, so I probably would like to keep the coin. Yeah, with this particular hand, you play the blood cell, you go two face, and you pass. Yeah. If I had plays for next turn, I would have used my face into the M gang boss, killed the gang boss, but re dagger before, and then play the girl. Ah, but okay. we don't have enough. Uh, we don't have stuff to uh, to do. Sure. Okay. Jeez. Um, I think. Uh, mm, I think it's a pretty good turn for Skulker. And then hit the face into the taunt, and then the four three into the councilman. Let me think on this one for a second. This is quite a difficult one. I'll talk about it in a sec. So the alternative I'm considering is putting the 4-3 into the 1-3, face into the gang boss fan of knives, coin eviscerate. Ah, oh yeah. It's a very clean clear. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's All right. Really so 4-3 goes in, yeah. face into the gang boss, then draw with the knives. Coin of his, yeah, it's called. <clears throat> so there are some turns that are very hard to 
coach through because they're hard for me. So <laughs> these turns uh, I play and then we evaluate it afterwards. Yeah, it's okay. So if you go with Skulker, you lose value on the Imgang boss, right? Because you're not yeah. hitting that one. Um, you're also sacrificing your, your Blood Cell Raider. I just feel like Skulker is probably going to get good at some point. And this no, was a this was a clean <laughs> clear. Now, for example, the skull is really good. Um, other than that, we can play one of our drakes, but I don't think. The so I always good. like to just you know, if we have a great play, I put that aside and then say, okay, what's the alternative? Because we both see that skull is a nice clear yeah. here. So let's uh, let's see on the other ones. The other one could be a spiteful smith and kill the three two, or you know, go face for four and set up for a skulker. Uh, what are we going to do next turn? Dagger Barber. I think um, Skulker here and kill the Maiden's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think it just helps to have like uh, someone there with you who can talk about the turns. Like it helps so much. I. I used to um, meet up with a couple of friends um, and just play arena. One guy plays it, and mm -hmm. the other two are just like there to. Um, wow. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Sometimes lucky. Yeah, sometimes. Um, to to reevaluate your play, and that like helps a lot. Oh yeah, for sure. It's always good to have a little bit of a double check, especially yeah. if you're. For me, it's, I mean, for even for me, it's still useful. I, I, pl I just play so much arena that basically my past experience is my double check. I just go like, yeah, okay. what happened last time I did this shit? Hmm. <laughs> um, I think I would pillager dagger up, kill 1-1-1 one, 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 and go face. Yep, that's cool. Thank you. Last turn, there was the option to put the, uh, the pirate face, uh, but that then gives him the option to Dire Wolf, kill our 4 3 or something. So I'm not sure. It was, it was quite close to push extra face against the Warlock. It's always good to uh, evaluate the options. Yeah, against against Rogue and against uh, Warlock, it's always good to hit face, right? Oh, yeah. Pretty good Shadow Flame for him. Yeah, but I don't know. We still got so many cards. Like, what, what is he going to do? I think we always kill the 1 1. And uh, we. Can play a boar creeper on an empty board, which is fine. We can also play one of our five drops and re dagger, It'd also be okay. Um, of the five drops, I think I would lean towards the spiteful smith. Yeah, it's kind of a tough call because we've got cold blood in the hand as well, and we kind of want to set that up. I think that the bog and kill the one one is correct. Okay. Uh, and then next turn we have more flexibility. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think journey below always happens. Maybe. Definitely not. No. No. I mean, yeah, we, we got a lot of alternatives, that's true. Um, okay. So the play here was Dagger Barber, kill the 3 2, coin Smith, and push 6 face. Okay. And then let him deal with it. Yeah. So uh, when, whenever you're winning this hard, um, there's, you know, there's no reason, like, we just have so many cards, there's no reason to journey and lose out on tempo if we can tempo out a lot harder. Yeah. Wow, this thing is completely insane. I it is quite a bit. <laughs> one of the best I had in a long time. Yeah, it's it's definitely up there. I, I remember the best rogue deck I've ever drafted it had five auto barbers and it went five it went twelve zero. It's absolutely <laughs> nuts. <laughs> five auto barbers, yeah. not bad. I never had that many again. It was in Goblins versus Gnomes and it was just twelve zero easy peasy. <laughs> That's really when I, you know, when, when the card got introduced, cut introduced, Auto Barber, it just, you know, it wasn't a really, really tempo heavy meta because it was, it was even better then, but it's still up to this day my favorite card. Yeah. Yeah, I, I 
clearly see why. Yeah, all right, they are, they are, because people look at the card and like, really, this can't be that strong. And then you play yeah. with it, and like, holy shit. I mean, it's kind of like an Arathi weaponsmith. Yeah, but you can use it on turn two. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy, right? Um, I would toss everything except for the two. I agree. Let's take in the two here. Isn't Sap better? No, I, I feel like the Auto Barber is just more flexible. Sap allows for bigger swings, but you can almost always Auto Barber. Um, do we ever coin dagger here? Unfortunately, with the Barber missing, I'd go with the coin trog and just see what oh. he has. All right. And if he plays a 2 3, we can dagger and kill it for free. See if he wants to ping on turn 3 or play the 2 2 that pings. Uh, if he plays a 3-2, we can probably just trade and play Sun Fury or Dagger, depending on what makes sense. Oh no! <laughs> check it, check it, check it, check it. And the bomber. Okay, um... <sighs> right here, I probably would kill it. Just yep. Dagger up and... That is the Rogue's policy. Check it, check it dies, no matter what. Yeah. Do you I play remember. Overwatch? I do not, Liam. I remember a run where I was playing Rogue and I had, I think, one or two Auto Barbers and I think three Buccaneers or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I, like, my last loss was against a mage who had, like, one Snow Chugger and then a coin Water Elemental into another Water Elemental. And it was really sad. Yeah, those are, those are the real rough, rough losses. Um, I think we play the Blood Sail Raider. And the young priestess. Mm, the young priestess would only heal your face for three, assuming that he pings one of our guys, then trades the priestess, then trades the blood seal. Oh, that's true. But if the buff lands on either one, that makes it more annoying for him. If the buff lands on the blood seal, it's good. If the buff lands on the trog, it's bad. So it's yeah. really about how much we value it. Next turn, we got. I think it's okay, Blood Sail and Priestess, because you kind of you kind of gamble. It's a 50-50. Um, positioning anything? Uh, as long as the Raider is on an edge, I am okay with it. Okay. Mm. How much does coaching cost? A session is fifty dollars nice. for Infinities. Wow. Oh, we won the roll. That's excellent. Got it. Okay. That's probably the wrong order. Oh, he's pinging off that one. Sure. Six face? Oh, okay. Alright. Um, we kill it and we re dagger Barber. Yep, excellent. I think if I were him, I would have probably pushed another three face, seeing as it was so obvious that yeah. we would kill it with dagger anyway. Yeah. Can I like your no. okay. It's not too bad. Yeah, that's that's still fine. I can play yeah. I think we just play the Smith. Yep. Kill the Smith, Smith kill his guy and then we've got the option of Either Cold Blood or Journey Below to combo the Rider next turn. Hooray for straightforward turns. Uh, yeah, it's like... Oh no. I hate this card, really. Like, <laughs> honestly, who designed this fucking card? Like, it's, it's really ugly, I agree. Oh, thank god. Thank god we got the Eviscerate, because I really don't want to hit the Smith into it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we journey below first. Yep, for sure. I prefer it. Wow. Okay. Legendary. Hmm. Um, Interesting. I don't know how good the like the Blood Mage Thanos is potentially really, really good in our deck. Um, yeah, I would probably pick the Thanos here. Nice. Yeah, just do a combo. So oh, I, I think 
I think here we go for the uh, Sun Fury first, right? Yep. Yep. Now we just the Vis's guy. Do we call Blood our guy? Hmm. That's the question. I don't think so. No. no. I think Mage is at 30 health. If he fired balls this, it's already good enough. Yep. Okay. Guys, let's not make the subject whether the price is correct, yes or no. There is there is supply and there is demand. And right now I like the demand. So if I if I lower the cost, there will be too much demand. I like to coach, but I don't like to coach every day. So I'm I'm perfectly happy with where I'm at. Okay. So what are we doing here? Um I think the face always Nah, maybe not always. Hang on. Uh, okay, so like my go-to play would probably be um, play a Drake. Um, I think Drake it's... always happens, so it's a good start. Start with Drake that. Always... I think right here. Oof. Man, hmm. oh man. Please. That would have been quite good. Um, then I think I would call Blood the Protector to kill the 5-5. Five five. Yep, um, I'm on board. And then face into the 3 2 and uh, 4 face. Yep. Getting the hang of this. But I mean, it was pretty straightforward. Yeah, but I mean, that's why we saved the Cold Blood as well. So we could uh, assist. Yeah. That's pretty much why we played the 2 3 as well there. Just setting up the Cold Blood was good. There's that fireball. All right. <laughs> we get fun of knives for three. <laughs> Actually, can and uh, then dagger up and kill it. But we would go down to eleven health. Yeah, the other the other line would be the tank and the panda and trade, yeah. which is probably better. It's just you know, probably. it's just sad we can't go for the memes. Yeah, <laughs> I like the uh, tank and the panda and the trade. But memes are always the play. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Right. Okay. Wait. Frostbolt, yeah, flame an cannon. Another one from the Ethereal Conjurer. Sure, why not? <laughs> so that's the second flame strike that we've gotten Ethereal. Yeah. I'm a faith a little bit up. I think play the Raider, um, dagger up, kill his guy. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Do we ever use the nope. blood mage? Nope, nope. We keep it for the fan. Okay. It's a consecration on the man, so that's good. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's um. This is why the uh, this is why the uh, raider is so good in this kind of deck. I feel like raider is good overall, but especially in a, like a deck like this where you just need something to finish the game, right? Yeah. This is such a good card. Oh baby, mm. sometimes lucky. Oh, wow. Um, and he's got more. So he's got basically our deck in mage form. He's just like yeah. pew 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 pew. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, very fun and interactive. <laughs> <laughs> it's two fun and interactive decks playing oh, against man. each other. Uh huh. Do we ever cycle the fan? Good question. Hmm. So what do I have left in our deck? War Golem, Bar Creeper. Those are two great hits. Uh, Tomb Pillage is another hit. South Sea is another hit. Yeah, cycling the fans, good. Oh baby. Mm, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, man. So here's the here's hit the thing, right? Dagger. Yeah, hit face, re dagger always, no matter what. I think with backstab and shadow strike, we probably keep the Talnos. I don't think we want to cycle it. Yep. Could have been a um, could have been a uh, squid face, which would have been better here. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, who's gonna play around that much removal, right? Oh baby, the backstab. The stab is good. There is our own squid face. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Tall nose and backstab the four three seems like a reasonable start. Incredible. Indeed. Hmm. 
So the squid phase definitely comes down. We're yeah. definitely stabbing a shield. And then I think it's just a re-dagger. I don't think we shadow strike this guy. Okay. It's just like process of, elim process of elimination gets you there. Because it's like, hmm, do we have a shadow strike that? It's like, nah, because I want to play this 4-4. Four, four. If I want to play this 4-4, four, four, I probably want to re-dagger. So yeah. there we go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an evil laugh moment. <laughs> dirty. Dirty, mm. dirty rogue. Just embrace it, man. All God right. damn. All let's, right. Uh, let's see what lurks Skalker. beneath the depths here. Yeah, we play the Skalker. We play the Skalker. And then we can... Uh, the four always goes face. And then we get to think whether we want to poison up. So he's on 17. If we push three, he's on 14, and we have eight, 11. So we're not threatening lethal. Um, but we are not likely to use our face on his minions. Yeah, I think poison and hit his face is fine. Yeah, smork. Smork. So another eviscerate is left for lethal. Oh, we can Shadow Strike our four as well. Oh, yeah. Mm, so what do we have? Eight plus five. Wait a minute. Six. That's yeah, perfect, I think. You got it. So let's do the math one more time. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 14. OK. So Barber, face, yeah. face, Shadow Strike, our four, four, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, nice top decks. Dunk. Wow. No. Yeah, GG I don't guys. think I've ever gotten uh, a run in Whispers of the Old which was 8 0. That's always a great feeling, right? When there's yeah. just. when you're just not, not losing. <laughs> it's just not happening. Alright. All right. Um, I don't think I have anything to write down again. Yeah, that one was it was really just, you know, a, a removal fiesta. Uh, if anything, <laughs> you know, the, the best thing was there just setting up the cold blood, just identifying that you're not going to cold blood there to push for damage. You're going to cold blood to just trade. Yeah. yeah. Removal fiesta. I like that one. Yeah. Yep. All right. <sighs> Um, also, I read um, that you used to play League of Legends. Yep, I what used did to. You, did you do it like professionally or? Uh, well, yes, but that means that you make money off it, right? So <laughs> I wasn't a, a pro player, but I, I did play League for uh, a living because I, I was a streamer. Ah, but, okay. uh, I wasn't, I wasn't. So I think I was one tier below the pro players. Uh, okay. I was like. Because I, um, I I didn't have the champion pool variety to compete with. I essentially just played assassins. That's it. Ah, okay. Mm. Um, I think we keep it all. It's looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we keep it all. Mm -hmm. I just can't put up with a community of League of Legends like Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, Hearthstone would be the same if you could talk <laughs> in game. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All like, right. That's not happening. Yeah, we pass. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Eight and all. Huh. I mean, we can just kill it by pinging it and backstabbing, which seems okay. This is one of those turns where we definitely want to take our time to make sure we're not missing anything. I think the obvious play is probably the right play here. Uh, but you could you could alternatively also dagger pass and then next turn use barber to kill it. So it's definitely worth considering. Yeah. I think that we're definitely... Hmm, so we don't want to dagger up and then wait because then you will know we have a backstab. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think dagger rhythm backstab is fine. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Remove his guys.
Yeah, like a, a friend of mine tried to do like a similar thing with League of Legends where he got his stream set up and uh, I d used to do a queue a lot with him like around the Platinum, Diamond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are, those are good, right? Those duo uh, streams. Nah. Yeah. Not really? <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Sometimes they were cool, but like a lot of the times we would both just get really frustrated at the game. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, this is kind of an awkward turn. Yeah. Like, we can't really remove... Yeah, no, we can't remove the creeper. So the um, real question is whether we are using Deadly Poison this turn. And I don't think so. I think we're just playing a Trog and passing. Yeah, that's yeah. what we need to do. Also. No, what, what I used to do a lot uh, with friends was uh, smurfing. I think that was that was really... F I mean, I was that guy. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was that dance game smurf. Uh, <laughs> But it was just to um, oh kind of like show the viewers how you're you're not in bronze just because you know you got unlucky or this or that. You're you're in bronze because you're not exploiting the mistakes your opponents make. We are so fan of knives. God damn. Yes. Um, but I think I would kill the two one, and after that, ah, uh, I'm not too sure. But I think I would just play the Sun Fury and re dagger. So face into the 2-1 every time, let's start with that. So now we need to make a decision, because we could also re-dagger, poison, and next turn Skulker, use our face to kill whatever he just played. Oh yeah, that's true. Or we could play the Sun Fury and say, now I can still play the Smith if I want to. Yeah. I think I like dagger deadly poison here, and then just pass. Sets up the Skulker really nicely. Shady talking about leak. I was talking about leak, guys. <laughs> What's my bad, guys? <laughs> well, looks like he doesn't want to give us too much, but it's gonna give us the board. Yeah, it's it's still a great skulker. Um, yep. Yeah, skulk clear the board. Looking good. Pew 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 pew. Good so much fun. Hmm. Oh wow, the turn 5 Hammer of Wrath, I will take it sir. Hmm. Um, now here's the question, do we, we probably want two bodies on the board, I think. Yep, I um, think that's correct. So we are not playing the Smith. And we're playing the protector and the squid face. Yeah, not in that order. Squid face first, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Love this face. <laughs> yeah, five mana, four, three. Play six backstabs, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Seems balanced. It's pew, 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 pew. <clears throat> Sure. Okay. Um, we can hit our face in and the four four, and just say we got the value on our side, and then re dagger spiteful smith. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. We got the paladin right where we want him. So. Okay. If we wanted to play around uh, our four four dying, we could like. Uh, I've played the barber and used the, the two, but there was no real reason to do that. This is really good. And positioning against um, against Paladin doesn't really matter. No, not so much. And we've used our one card that cares about positioning, which is the uh, Sun Fury, so I think we're good. Sure. Follow okay. Zerus. We have a pretty nice, easy enrage. Our guy, we can get like both minions to one HP. Then he dies. Then we kill the three three, I think. Mm. And with our weapon, we kill the two two. And then we can even like tempo Qualdia with a spider tank behind it. I don't know. Let me think on this one for one sec. 
Yeah, so Smith and 2 3 into the 2 3. Yeah. Then your face goes into the 2 2. Yeah. Then you Valdi re dagger. Ah, okay. And then you trade off the 4 3. Yeah, okay. It was kind of tricky to get that in the, in the maximum order. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Nice. Yeah, Optimize so. Or... Yeah, that one, th that's just, you know, taking your time and seeing how can I just, you know, squeeze this to the maximum how can i get yep. the maximum value here all right um hmm. now i think the paladin doesn't have too much reach typically so i think i'm okay with hitting my face into the six four i'm not really it's gonna slow us down a little bit too much okay um so i think your one four hits the one one every time yeah and your 2-1 hits the face, that's for sure. What else do I want to do here? Uh, I think our face goes face. And then we re-dagger. But we would lose... Uh, we would lose 2, which is fine. It's acceptable. Because okay. yep. oh. you're gaining 2-2 two, two on your Valdir. That's a yeah. perfectly fine trade. And then 8 face. And then I would just play the Pillager and the tank and just say, Let's go, baby. Because uh, we slow down so much if we uh, kill that 6-4. Because yeah. you kill it with your face and you're probably killing the 4-drop with your Valdir Raider. And I already stated that, you know, in the very late game, Paladins become really annoying because they can do a lot of, okay. like, high value plays where they use light in the darkness and then they get a Tyrion and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's... Yeah, yeah. that has happened to me. Yeah, it happens more there because light in the darkness right now, they, they love that card, so... Um. Unless he taunts up, I think that's game. Yep. Yeah, this is once again another one of those things like, what's he going to do about it? It's equality consecrate, but then if he has that, we're probably screwed anyway. Um, there's mind control tech still, your 8 8, which is pretty unlikely, but you know, I think it's more likely you lose because you dealt with that uh, at 6 4. 9 and 0. <clears throat> All right. Good stuff. Okay. Go next. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry guys. Let me pour some tea for this. Double cons would have done it. Yeah, but then he doesn't win, right? He just trades his entire board and you still have the cards on him. Unless uh, we were we dead, but I don't think so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Barbers do not leave the hand. Very nice. Okay. Yep, not much to do here. Um, I think we just dagger up. Yep, definitely. Daggering. Because yes. in the past, I think I would have played the Blood Bowl Raider. Yeah, it's really just being comfortable with Rogue that allows you to dagger when you need to. Yeah. I think you've just seen it work out so many yeah. times in a row now that you're like, all right, let's just dagger. <laughs> let's just not play anything. Seems fine. Um, I th don't think we need the barber right now, so I would just hit the 2 1, play the raider. I agree. I think that's great. 3 3 body is pretty reasonable on turn 3, anyway, so. Yeah, that's true. Are you still good to go for this run, Asma, or is it going a little bit too long? What am I drinking? Right now I'm drinking blueberry tea. It's pretty, uh, pretty delicious. See, like uh, both both of the shredder guys, the pellet shredder and the sky golem. Mm -hmm. I, I'm never like a hundred percent sure. Do I want to trade into them? How do I trade into them? So my first question is: Is it going to be annoying on the board? And the second question is: What am I going to do otherwise? So, if I could, I would ignore it here. But because we're probably going to want to eviscerate this turn, we're not going to ignore it just because otherwise we'd flow too much mana. So here oh. I'd play the Barber and then just Eviscerate is 4-3. Oh, okay. Because I don't fancy playing a 4-mana 4-4, four four, or I don't fancy playing a Journey here. Now we're just hoping it drops a 3-2. That'd be great. Well, it's a 4-3. <laughs> Never lucky. 
Um, all right, I think that means that our phase kills one one. Yeah. I would probably push three phase and say yeah. you probably have to trade this anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You think it went too long, but you don't watching the run. All good, Asmo. Up to you, my friend. Okay. Makes the trade himself. Sure. Huh. Now, right here, I would most likely play Dagger and the uh, Prophet or Spider Tank. I'm not sure, but I would lean towards the Prophet just because one more attack. I would spider tank dagger simply because the spider tank does the same job as the prophet versus the mana worm and it also has as much health so okay. then i would like to keep the prophet to maybe play it for free later on yeah yep wow what? Yep, all good for that. Plays around the Skulker. Oh, baby. And the Doesn't play around the top deck barber. <laughs> <laughs> what a noob. Um, I think I would uh, re dagger, play the barber, and the 4 4. Yep. And this is something we couldn't have done if we had played the Prophet last turn. So. Yep. That's true. So it's nice to keep that flexible card. Polymorph the spider tank on turn five. Yeah, so we've got a pretty good read at his hand, right? It's uh, probably stocked with those kind of things. Yeah. Ugh. See, here's the guy again. Let's see if I learn anything. Um, this is this is tough, right? Because flame strike is also a card right now. Yeah. So this is a shitty situation to be in, no matter what. And I think he's nine and zero. Oh, he's going to have a flame strike. Yeah. So I think the four four goes into the six four. I'm just yeah. gonna do that because then I have more information and we can go from there. Okay. That's kind of bad. Mm, yeah. It's I think I would bad. journey below probably. And maybe afterwards, yeah. But then he can just ping the buccaneer now. I yeah, I think it's War Golem and kill this guy. Yeah. It's really unfortunate. Just an unfortunate series of events. So if we had chosen to War Golem and face, um, Flame Strike Bump clears the board, he keeps a 4 drop. Even though it's very likely he's got another big removal because he polymorphed our guy, I think you need to just gamble on it. But yeah, if, if that is not a mage, I'm ignoring that 6-4 no matter what. Okay. But unfortunately it's a mage and mage kind of threatens to kill your board all the time. so. Ah, uh, nice. Wow, our top decks have been on point. You're, you're really good at ripping the right card off the top yeah. at the right times. So. It's, it's not... It's but not the deck is really point. good, right? There's a lot yeah. of good cards. Let's start with the journey here, yeah. just to get some more information. That's fine. Um, squid face? Uh, I can't see the other one. Yeah, squid face. <clears throat> and then we eviscerate his guy, push seven face. And yep, eviscerate his guy, push seven face. Then we... Now, I don't know if we just play the Buccaneer and, and weapon up, or do we just play the Squid Face? I'd play the Squid Face, you know. Okay. He didn't have anything for a War Golem. You know, if he has something, he'll probably throw it on the War Golem instead of the Squid Face anyways. Yeah, and, we, and we keep the Buccaneer. We keep the Buccaneer, yeah, for sure. Just making sure. Oh, wow. Did he just polymorph the tank without having backup? Because it looks like that. Yeah, apparently. Um, I'm leaning towards just pushing face now. Oh yeah, we're never killing that. Not in a million no. years. So, uh, Buccaneer Dagger always happens. Priestess happens. Face with all our dudes in our face happens. And then we can think about whether we want this Skulker on the board or not. Um, I don't think so because like the only thing that saves him is flame strike no he doesn't if he flame strikes he's dead to the skulker uh he's dead to the ah, yeah. to the four four death yeah. rattle yeah. so i would play it just okay. because he can't play flame strike he would have to play flame strike on oyotron and if he has flame strike on oyotron yeah sure oh i didn't check the positioning but uh, this is perfectly fine yeah. okay. lizard lizard would save him yeah 
Unless the two shots snipe the 4-4. Again, the ethereal conjurer, dude. Every fucking time. Sorry. Nope, oh, that's lethal. That kills our guy, and then we go face oh, yeah. for 4 Oh, shit. A GG. And this is why Squid Face is a good card, and I don't know why a lot of people have it ranked pretty low. Holy shit, I didn't see that. Boom! Ten wins, baby. Let's go. <laughs> well, I mean, if anything is gonna go 12 0, it's you know, something that looks like this deck. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. With the right guidance, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've, I've got. Let's say I've got experience piloting these kind of decks. Just, you know, I play so much that I get these decks from time to time. So. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Yeah, good to go, man. I feel like we've just covered a ton of uh, fundamentals at the start, and now we're just kind of riding the the run to the end. Yeah. So just going over everything. I, I think you know, if anything, you've just learned a lot about the rogue hero power and how versatile it is. Yeah, I, I learned a lot about like playing rogue in general because like my my average rogue runs even in TGT were four wins or something, and even in TGT it was yeah. pretty good. And because you chose to do this on stream, you can go and rewatch it as well. It'll be yeah. in the VODs. So. That's part of the reason why I agreed uh, to do it. Thinking ahead, I like that. Um, I think I toss everything. Yep, throw it all. Hmm. That's the first. Yeah, we haven't had the profit in the opening hand yet. It's quite cool. All right. So, <laughs> what's the play? <laughs> uh, coin dagger. Coin dagger, baby. Yeah. This is why auto barber is so good. It just allows you to uh, make such efficient plays. Okay. Well, it's not the best now, but I think I still. Yeah, it's still a three-two, right? Yeah. We just play it and pass. This is kind of the thing, right? When it's bad, it's still neutral. It's like, oh, I, I've played a 3 2 for 2. And then, you know, my weapon is buffed, so it's not like that's never going to come in handy. So. Every time Squid Face helps Shady win the game, Shady just sacrifices him with no mercy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Here he is again. He's like, I'm going to get wrecked again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really want to shadow strike this, do I? I might, so I'm thinking I, here. If, yeah, if the, we... the, the alternative is like get our guy pinged and then he gets a 1-1. One, one so and... he pings, he trades, he plays a 2. Our face may or may not kill his guy. Uh... I don't know, I think I would still go with the prop. I think profit's fine because you make him have a 2-drop, so yeah. profit's fine. Also, like Shadow Strike just kills so much stuff. Like, yeah, but it's Mage, right? And it's very dangerous to hold yeah, removal true. against Mage. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can Fan of Knives clear the board. But we can't play anything else then. Hmm. I don't think he has enough pressure on us for us to want to clear. I would yeah. play the squid face and then okay. just pass. Uh, not killing the 1-1? One, one? No, because we have Fan of Knives in hand. So. Okay. And it's not suspicious to him at all because he just thinks, oh, he just wants to keep more charges on his weapon. Yeah. Which technically we want, right? No, it's not so much that I don't want to play Prophet Tarot, is that I think that removal against mage isn't that great just because mage removes a lot from you anyways so i'd rather just remove when i can will he kill it or not he, i think he queued up the kill yeah yeah it's unfortunate the fan would have been quite fun okay um right here i think i would kill the three three with a face i think that always happens i agree And then I think only one card makes sense here, right? Yeah, Smith. Yep, just play the Smith. 
the squid face can see the shadow strike in the hands. Yeah, he was already getting scared. Like, no, not again. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> Hmm. Wow. Okay. That can get pretty big. But hmm. we have like a fancy play with uh, betrayal fan of knives here. Um, I would betray the three three and then fan of knives and um, kill the three three with our face. Definitely considering it. Uh, it's probably another nice line. We can get fancy here, put a dice to flame strike, I think. We can also like shadow strike play fan of knives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanna um, get fancy here. I think you uh fan of knives go from there. Okay. Alright. Then you put the four six into the flame maker. Yep. And then you play the blood cell, which is gonna be huge. Holy shit, and yeah. then you kill this guy. Yeah. So this probably means flame strike, but this is a fairly low value flame strike for him. Yeah. So kind of just baiting it out. All right, no flame strike. Sometimes lucky. Um, I think I sh do I shadow strike it. It's kind of awkward, right? Because we can't yeah. do anything else. Um, it's definitely worth considering it. Uh, I think Shadow Strike is fine. We'll go from there. Really? Yep. Because because like right now I'm thinking, um, since we can't really do much else if we go for the Shadow Strike, um, I think maybe the Trog and the Shadow Pan would be better and just. Yeah, play. but there's a good chance that we can just kill it and keep the pressure up. So I would I would Shadow Strike okay. it. Yeah. All right. Just because it's Mage once again. If it's not Mage, I would ignore it. Okay, is that ever relevant? I don't know. Mm. Um, we can dagger up, hit it with the 4-4 four, four and our dagger. Yeah, face and the 4-4, four, four, kill it. Yeah. We play the trog and then 8-face. See, and this is the thing where now if he flame strikes, the board is empty and then we can still go and play a raider or yeah. something. Oh. Because I think I would flame strike that previous board instead of playing a, a thing. Yeah, uh, Skygolem, so I think he doesn't have it. Yeah. Pretty insane. Oh, wow. Please, not the smith. Nice. Okay, very nice. Oh, right. Killed everything. Six mana. <laughs> um, Probably not the best, seeing as our guys are dying yeah. as well. <laughs> um, I mean, we can just kill everything with what we have on the board. But we would have to sacrifice the smith, which I don't like too much. Yeah, let me think on this one for a second. This is one of those complicated turns. I think I like bet betrayal on the two two. I'm not sure. Then you'd have to put the three one in there, face in there, smith in there, eight face. Um, then we can't read that. Yeah, betrayal the two two. Play the shadow pan on the far left. Put your smith in the taunt. Yep. Face in the tutu? Yeah, oh. face and truck, kill his little guys, and then eight face. That value, holy <coughs> shit. Yep. Not say a raider. Yeah, it, it was kind of a uh, kind of a gamble going for the big raider there, but that paid off quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, looks like we've got him. Yeah. Hello, my things. He's alive, I think. Yeah, he's. Oh no, is it perfect? I think, I it think it's perfect. perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. All right, so 11-0, you know what that means, man. It's time for some digging. <laughs> yeah, give me a second to set up some diggies. It's going to be quite loud, guys. So I'm probably just going to put it really, really low volume for you guys. Uh, but don't, louder, don't get epic. scared. Yeah. Sorry? The louder, the more epic. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, the, this was a really, really, really lucky run for me. 
Uh, one second. All right, uh, Luvi, I'm good to go for the uh, final round, hopefully. All right. Shady, don't try coaching sessions, right? Uh, unless I specifically mention up front, uh, I track everything, Roldy. Uh, and I'm going to be fairly blunt. The reason why I track coaching sessions is just because I tend to do very well in them because I just only focus on, only focus on that. All right, final boss. There's um, minimal stream interaction as well. One second, guys. The diggies are coming up. My PC is going to work with me. Okay. I think I'm tossing the uh, everything but the profit. Uh, one second, man. Can't see the hands yet. Okay. Just a profit for me. Yeah. Yep. All right. Looking for our early game cards. So rogue versus rogue is, I I consider it like almost like a dance. It's just uh, we both know. I mean, especially at this win rate, we probably both know the routine. We both know how it goes. Yeah. So you're essentially looking to. This is an interesting term, by the way, because we may coin dagger. Really? Um. Because okay. if you play something here, he kills it with yeah. his uh, play, probably. So I like Coin Dagger. Yeah. Because we need a dagger for our squid face on four. And we're going to trog on two and we're going to profit on three. But I like to delay playing a minion as long as possible. Just because rogues do very well with removing. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm glad that we didn't take the 50 50. Um, I think it's truck. Sorry? I think it's truck. Just a stone splinter truck. Do we hit in? I don't think we do. I think we truck for sure, and then we uh, we probably pass. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> no music at all, really. That lag? Yeah. I think it might be my computer, guys. I'm not sure. Let me see if my uh, OBS is fine. Are you having any lag at all in game or not? Um, a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, right here I would uh, kill this 2 1 and play the Prophet. Yeah, kill this 2 1, play the Prophet. So this is kind of the, the dance, what Rogue and Rogue, Rogue v Rogue is all about. It's all about just making sure you give him as little to interact with as possible and remove as much of him as okay. possible. It's really, uh, it's quite interesting, really. Oh, it's a pretty nice bar balance. But it's also a nice backstab south scene. Okay, guys, I'll just increase the volume here, one sec. So, if we read Agar Barber, we're left with a 3-2 on an empty board. If we squid face backstab, we're left with a 4-4 on an empty board. Next turn we have Dark Iron. It's a really yeah. interesting turn. I like the backstab and the squid face here. Um, we don't attack face, right? No, definitely not. Our, our dagger is super valuable right now because we have both Barber and Squid Face. Better now? Alright, guys. Um, I would three dagger 
play the bomber and deadly poison? Can this guy push full face? Probably not. Really? Smoke them? No. Think about another line you could do here. Poison first. Okay. Kill this guy. Re dagger, barber, four face. Uh, okay. Now you have more mileage on your dagger for both yeah. barber and squid face. Okay. So it's a little, 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 little uh, difference, but goes quite a long way, most likely. Right. Goku looks pretty good. Yep, Skulker's fine. Um, positioning wise? The... Um, it shouldn't matter, seeing as we're about to sacrifice a squid phase. So. Yep, squid, squid phase goes in. And then phase for three for sure, and then we think about whether we ever push four here. If we push four, it goes to 16. Next turn we'll have 11 available. I don't think it makes enough sense yet. I think I pass here. Keep the death spite. It's really loud, guys. You guys are you guys can't make up your minds. <laughs> like it was like not audible and now it's too loud. And I increased it by like what three points? It's funny because you called it too. It's like when we when yeah, we talked for sure, off, right. stream, off, off stream. Fine, uh, we'll, put, we'll put it just like this. I'm not moving it after this. Alright. Uh this is once again a really, really good uh example. What do you want to do here? Um, kill the 3-3, three, three, play the war golem? Yeah, perfect. I love that you're playing the taunt second. Uh, whenever you're not under pressure, always hold your taunt. Yeah. Tempo-wise, the seer is pretty good. Just to get rid of the divine shield. <sighs> is it? Uh, what does tempo? <laughs> what does tempo mean? Right? Um, tempo means I can push face. Mm, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's aggressive. That's, that's aggro. That's yeah. that's the aggro-wise. The seer is really good because you get to push seven. Tempo-wise, yeah. the seer is pretty bad. So yeah, I would just cool. uh, double trade and then play the bog creeper. Okay. But I mean, Seer definitely was uh, thinkable because now you know we we did put our guy in uh, eviscerate range. Yeah. Which he might have here. No. Oh wow! <laughs> it's getting desperate. I like it. He's in for the long run. Oh baby, the top deck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's I mean, put this man out of his misery. Yeah. Shadow strike. Shadow palm. Yeah, it's just about positioning where we're gonna want it. Um, we want the shadow pawn on the left, I think. No. No? No. We want your shadow pan in the middle. Um, because if he betrays a shadow pan, the bog okay. is on two. Right. He's... If he betrays the bog and then hard removes the bog, you can stab your shadow pan. Yeah. It's a very minor detail. Gigi. All here. right. Oh baby, 12 0 Asmo called it at the start. I mean, it was it was a it was a pretty disgusting deck if we're honest, right? Cuz it worked out as well, but I, I feel I think you're going to get a lot from rewatching the draft cuz you yeah. can really feel immediately how I go like, okay, we've got our removal, just fat fat fat, just give me fat. And I was like, all right, war goal, I'll take it. Fall there, I'll take it. Just give me something for the late game. And that's yeah. exactly what we needed to close these games out. All right, uh, yeah, I will uh, stop sharing my screen, so stop stacking. Okay, uh, yeah, dude, we are watching. Let's open it up, Let's see what's in here. All right. Asmo did call it confirmed arena genius. Yeah, man, <laughs> Asmo's pulling 12 zeros every time after stream where you guys don't see it. Two right. packs and a lot of money, nice. Nom, nom, nom. All right, man, that was a really nice coaching session.
Thank yeah, you man. for uh, agreeing to do it on stream. That's always uh, really, thank really you, nice. Thank you, man, for the, for the good advice and yeah, everything. Happy to be of assistance, man. All right, let's see what's okay. in these packs. Very good rogue archetype. Yeah, the reactive and then play fatties. That's just really nice. <clears throat> I generally have pretty good results in the coaching sessions, Daimodius, but that's just because usually uh, there's more chat interaction uh, and I get to focus a little bit more on these. All right, dude. Uh, okay, Luvi, uh, you have a good one, man. Golden uh, Rea. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, I think um, before we round it out, is there anything left on your mind? Is there anything you know, you've got questions about right now? Um, well... I guess I'm I'm pretty good on on the rogue things now, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, um, let me have a quick think here. Um, what I always do is uh, at the end of a coaching session, I just tell people because in the moment, unless you know you did like, some really good preparations and you had a list full of question uh, questions, I always tell people sleep on it and then just send me a mail if something comes up because that All gives right. you a little or just rewatch the session and just be like, oh yeah, there. Why did we do that? I didn't quite get that. And then you can just yeah. ask me and just include the timestamp. And then I don't uh, mind following up on that. Yeah. Um, the only thing um, that like comes to mind from the top of my head is like um, general, I guess, um, archetypes that I should draft for like for mage and okay. rogue. I guess more of the reactive type. Like yeah, so um, that's a really good question. That's something a lot of people skip over. So with Rogue, like we just saw, this is the preferred archetype right now. Um, have yeah. removal and then be able to close the game out by playing something of substance later on. So don't draft too low. Uh, don't draft too many one drops. Get the two drops, right? Because like you saw here, they are the oil that make the machine work. They activate your eviscerates. They activate your shadow pans. You know, they just they fill the holes. They're just really, uh, they're really, really nice. Yeah. For mage, it is similar. You're going to want a lot of reactive uh, cards, things like flame cannon, frostbolt, twilight flame color, just things to react to the opponent playing things. And then from there on, uh, you're going to want to play your value cards. Now, as a mage, you want your value cards to be things that are very hard to punish. Uh, Ethereal Conjure is very hard to punish. Face a Summoner is very hard to punish. A Jormungar is easy to punish. That's that's a sap, that's an assassinate or, you know, whatever, a hex. And that's that's a point where your opponent can flip the board. So preferably not the super fatties. You want things that generate more cards. No Mission Venter, Acolyte of Pain, those things. Those are really okay. good to give you the, uh, the push. Um, um, and for like the, the just one tier below, like uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not probably not going to drop yeah uh, so much. for i, for I guess warlock, it's aggressive i think yeah for it's warlock like you're looking for something completely different you're looking for six one drops or something if you can uh you're just gonna want really low curve low mid game and then a really nice late game so like maybe two krakens or a kraken and a bog or two bogs or you know just two three real fatsos to close out the game but for the rest really good early game so one drop two drop three drop overload on that low on fours low on fives and then six seven eight like maybe two three good fatsos to close it out okay that's uh that's a really big swing Right, and um, maybe just just really quick, um, mm -hmm. um, um, Druid and yeah, I don't mind. Paladin, I'll, Shaman. I'll go over Druid. Uh, Paladin, I'm not going to give any advice because I'm not good with Paladin, so I'd rather not fuck that up. Um, okay. Druid is very difficult. <laughs> it's because Druid is a lot of feeling where the draft takes you and where you know how to play it. But what I like about Druid is that Druid has a high potential to switch into aggression. So with Druid, it's never one or the uh, one or the other. It's um, you want to draft a deck that's capable of both, where you can flip the switch. Because a Druid is not always going to uh, outvalue someone, and it's also not always going to out aggro someone. So okay. with Rogue and Mage, you have a very clear path. It's like okay, I'm gonna react to what he plays, and then I'm gonna win in the late game. Yeah. 
A druid isn't strong enough to do that to mage and rogue. So against mage and rogue, you want to flip it uh, in the mid game, the mid, you know, maybe maybe the early late game. You just want to uh, have that switch to go aggressive. So cards that I really like in druid are thing, you know, a savage roar, uh, druid of the claw for charge, maybe a wolf rider for charge, starfire for face, swipe for face. So against against the really aggressive classes like a warlock. Uh, maybe a shaman or something like that. You can react and just play a couple big minions and win the game, but that's not going to win you the game against rogue or mage. So that's why druid is perceived as very weak right now, because people try that. They try to play big minions. They try to play the really slow value style against rogue and mage, and they're getting pooped on, right? So against rogue and mage, you need to be able to switch it up and kill them. You can't just outvalue them. Um, but look at my uh, highlights. Let me see if I have one. You can study that one, and that's going to give you a good idea. Uh, let me have a look. See here. So I had a twelve druid uh, very recently. I think two days ago with uh, with Victor. You can have a look at that. Uh, actually, just you know, in my my highlights page, I'm just gonna. Linked at you. It's also on my YouTube, but the, it comes delayed there. So, okay. Where can I type something to you? Uh, um, I'll probably. Just, I'll just email it. That's fine. Yeah, or or in in battle.net. Uh, yeah, but can you paste it there? Uh, I mean, can you copy it back? I think so. But it's just my highlights, really. Yeah, yeah. I I think I know where to find All it. All right. So. Okay. Just, nice. just go to my highlights and check out the 12 druid because I can explain it to you like this, but seeing it in action is yeah. going to give you a much clearer picture yeah. how to do that. Okay. All right. Great. All right, Louis. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries, man. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Yeah. See you. Bye bye. Later. All right, guys. That was a coaching session that uh, Louvi was so generous to hold on stream. So if you guys want a coaching session of yourself,